living under capitalism. So oh my god, it's like cringe after cringe after cringe. You're like on the mat and this guy's still hitting you with the cringe takes. Here it comes, guys. Yeah, this feels good, yeah. <laughs> <sighs> this feels good. What do you do? Reproductive labor. <laughs> Dude. <laughs> this is some brain rot sh at, like, this guy's brain is rotted. Power balances in Xander Hall's favor and everything. It's just 10 years older than him. She's 10 years older. No offense to Xander Hall, because I'm not going to sit here and roast somebody about their paper. Xander Hall probably makes like 30 or 40,000 a year on YouTube. He's not some like oil baron. Xander Hall's not pulling down six figures a month on YouTube. What are you talking about? These power imbalances. The guy's a struggling streamer. Like the guy's tweeted out in the past that he's like doesn't have money to make rent. Why do you keep talking about power imbalances here? Wow wow. God, this video is gonna be awesome. I can tell. I can already tell it's gonna be fun. Xander Hall. Most people know him as the cheeky young debate bro regular guy. That's what I know him as. Smonk. And. Or from his alt right pipeline video where he congratulates himself on not being a fascist anymore. What a cool and normal thing to be proud of. Well done for doing the bare minimum, bro. If you're into the debate scene, you'll probably know him as wannabe Vosh. Damn. People call him things like the Zuma version of Vosh or that he's copying Vosh's style, which is hilarious, to be honest, because Vosh copied Destiny's style and Destiny copied the modern debate format and they copied the Greco Roman debate format. Xander Hall is also seemingly surrounded by a bunch of controversial drama that is more often than not true for drama. every on the internet. And a lot of it is concerning and makes you wonder at all why people think he's even why a people? dude. Why people? Did he say- so, with all that in mind, why do people actually like him? Now, I know some people? of you are not going to want to hear this, but we have to address but... the facts here. And that is that when you scroll through Xander Hall's YouTube page, there is actually a lot of cool leftist stuff on there. See, he's making videos here about how Trump is bad, he's sticking up for trans people a lot, and that's all good. People around his age or even a bit older are probably going to see themselves in him a little bit and maybe even see him as a bit of a role model for getting into politics, especially if they're already kind of skewed to the left. He's got a good stream personality. He interacts with chat a lot. And this guy's he's dick writing, bro. In above average way. He's gained a big following since making content like this. And yes, I know you are going to get more views and subscribers based on bigger content creators that you associate with. I know that from my own experience. However, you can't deny that Xander Hall, well, he knows how to content create. He is an influencer who has a brand and whatnot. However, you'd be right in thinking that amongst these thumbnails, something just doesn't feel quite right. What's the that? The more, more you scroll, the more and more you start to see things like this. Uh, yeah, like Twitter discourse could be a bit myopic and wrong, but why are you focusing on this? Okay, that one's a little bit extra. I don't know what that's all about. Uh, oh. Okay. He's using the Amoga sound. A video in bad faith about one of my friends. Oh, and there's another one. Okay, it's just, just like obsessed with drama and... Okay, this is f***ed up. What is this guy's purpose on this platform? Is he a leftist? Or is he just a leftist some of the time and a piece of sh** whenever it suits him? Ooh. Xander Holt prides himself on debating people who disagree with him on anything in the marketplace of ideas. And he doesn't limit the people he platforms in order to protect his user base. Oh no, he loves debating fascists, especially about the human rights of the people that he claims to support. But why? If he's a leftist, surely he knows that platforming people with strict ideologies becomes more of a battle to convert the opposing person's audience, but actually you've achieved nothing because the supporters of your point of view stay the same and the supporters of your opponents stay the same, but... The new impressionable viewers that haven't been exposed to either ideology have now been exposed to a violent ideology that will influence them easier and easier depending on their material conditions and prior exposure to fascist ideology in our culture and media that permeates every single ounce of it. What Mule has forgotten is that there are probably a lot of people watching this video who don't understand why the platforming of bad ideas is, is bad. bad. <laughs> Debate bros have been taking up space in the online left for some time now, and a lot of their content focuses on debating fascists or conservatives on whether trans people should exist or wow. whether there is actually a white genocide happening. Wow. Their entire modus operandi seems to be that we need to convert people who think differently to us. No. They're obsessed with this idea. Just kill them even though it in a video game. proven wrong a hundred years ago by Vladimir Ilyich Lenin, who said this. Why should we bother to reply to Kautsky? He would reply to us and we would have to reply to his reply. There's no end to that. 
It will be quite enough for us to announce that Kautsky is a traitor to the working class and everyone will understand everything. And Bro, of course, multiple we solved real it. instances of people that these nerds have debated who have remained steadfast in their fascist opinions. So there you have it. Now you're briefed on the debate person, the type of person. leftist who <laughs> simply thrives on drama and doesn't give one iota of shits as to whether people are actually doing on the ground organizing, activism, or doing anything progressive at all. True. They love leftism as an aesthetic, as it were. Anyway, back to Mule. Thanks, Mule. So the question remains, does Zanderhol know that platforming fascists goes against everything that leftists stand for? How many fascists has he de-radicalized? Something that's important to point out is that the de-radicalization of fascists is a very real discussion that leftists are going to have to have at some point, as Nazi views and ideology have the possibility to outlast the potential revolution or global shift towards more radically left-wing politics. What I do know of this kind of action that exists so far is that it's undertaken mainly by charities like Hope Not Hate, who tend to infiltrate telegram groups of fascists like the BMP or the EDL in the UK, who create disorder and sow dissent amongst the rank and file fascists and the movements who are losing faith in them due to the fact that they're not really addressing their material conditions and seem to be focused on something that is more of a losing battle. What is certainly not effective is nerds on the internet debating them, especially when those nerds every now and then let their mask slip a little bit Ooh. and repeat the same fascist talking points they've been Ooh. arguing against. I always find it funny how these people, maybe he'll address this in the video, I always find it funny how like online places can radicalize the f out of people but they can't de-radicalize people. <laughs> like it, it, it's, it's only like a one-way pipeline. Like, I mean, if we're gonna say that online places are highly problematic because they have the potential to negatively influence people's thoughts, why can't it go the other way? Is that really that inconceivable? No, as you can see here, the debate Lord Xanderhal tends to actually just focus on drama, which is annoying because you can see from some of his other videos, he's right about some stuff, which is good. But then, why does he focus on myopic things like people on Twitter not agreeing Twitter. with Twitter. Why does he use words like woke scold and cry bully? What do those words even mean? Another thing to be aware of when looking at debate bros is their takes. Sometimes their takes are so bizarre that they make no sense whatsoever. For example, this video where Xanderhal clickbaits you into all hell with the title, My Controversial Take on Platforming Joe Rogan. His hot take is that Joe Rogan is an irresponsible platformer, but shouldn't lose his platform because he's a good interviewer. Now, for a start, Joe Rogan is not a good interviewer. He's a stoner that sits there and goes, Hey, you ever seen a chimp pilot a jet on DMT? And if he's irresponsible at platforming people, why then should he keep his platform? I think one of the funniest and most telling things about this video in particular is that Xanderhal is sat there in a Shadow the Hedgehog onesie. You know, Shadow the Hedgehog, the ambivalent, cool, and edgy character from the Sonic the Hedgehog series that doesn't really care about good or evil. He's too cool for that shit. Whilst wow. Xanderhal is sat there being ambivalent and edgy and not really caring about good or evil because he's too cool for that shit. An actual physicist or something on his show. Like this is a smart guy that's being interviewed here that I wish I could talk to because I have a million questions I would ask this guy if I could just talk to him directly. But Joe Rogan literally asked every question I would have asked. Ooh. And by the end of that episode of his podcast, I don't think there was there would be any questions I'd have left to ask that guy. Bro, you're a 23 year old edge lord that got famous too quick. You're not a good interviewer either. He goes on to say that Rogan's interview with Daryl A. Davis, the black blues and R&B musician, who converted KKK members and de-radicalized them, was really good, and he was immersed in listening to the story. But that's nothing to do with Joe Rogan. You can go and listen to Daryl A. Davis's story from multiple other sources. We don't need a brain force chugging steroid smacking moron to show us this, you know? Also, I am an ex-fan of the Joe Rogan experience, and... In all the episodes that I watched, and I did watch a lot of Joe Rogan, most of the time, Joe just kind of sits there and goes, huh, wow. So Xander Hall, after blathering on for two minutes, not really saying anything of value, decides that if the left banned Joe Rogan from Spotify, that that would be political suicide. Now, what does he mean by that? Well, I'll tell you what he means. Tell These us. debate nerds are always talking about optics. They're always saying that lefties are too much for the 
average voter. And that's why they focus on myopic issues that like maybe five people have spoken about on Twitter.com. You know, after they've had baby's first political take and they aren't actually big talking points in the broader left. You see, what they're trying to do is shame lefties into being more palatable to the center left powers in electoral politics. Not once have these nerds considered that most lefties have abandoned electoral politics in favor of direct action and organizing. Because you know, we're smart. But it always comes back to this optics shit. Like we should care about what conservatives and fascists think about us. If it's the left's fault that Joe Rogan gets taken off Spotify and Nazis are frothing at the mouth, why should I care? I would simply have a celebratory wank. But no, the reason that they talk about optics all the time is because they think that you can win fascists over to our side. Okay, this is just gonna be a really annoying video where he just goes over all the far left talking points where like fascism is just like spooky boogeyman that he sees everywhere around him and the people are like irredeemable and you have to win by just beating the shit out of him. I don't know. With good optics, he's starting to see how this is all a circle gang debate Nazis, have good optics, destroy all the lefties who have bad optics. In this video, Xander Hall talks about his editor, Cherry Bread TV, who did a tweet about a bunch of online slang used by queer people, specifically trans people. He then goes on to say that the cancellation that they received for this was outrageous and people lost their minds over it. Which he then uses to catapult himself into a rant about how all LGBTQIA plus people online, specifically those that criticize Vosh and other debate bros, are mentally ill and abuse victims and for some reason need online internet points to feel good about themselves. Damn. It's extremely fucked up and just more evidence that whenever him and any of his debate bro friends use the term woke scold, what they actually mean is person that is holding me to account. Guess this wow. is my uh, big woke scold moment, eh? Zanny boy. So huge thing to point out here, claiming that all LGBTQIA plus people are victims of abuse is a huge right wing conservative talking point. And it's actually the basis for conversion therapy. Conversion therapists tend to point out people's abuse as a reason for them being queer. Not enough attention from daddy? Well, you became gay to get attention from other men. Not enough attention from mum? Well, you became gay to fill the feminine shaped hole in your life. <sighs> not all queer people are victims of abuse and not all victims of abuse are queer. It's a huge false cause fallacy. You know, correlation is not causation. There's a lot more extremely telling points in this video, so I'm just gonna list all of them off real quick. Ahem. Zanahal says at the start of this video that his editor is a quote unquote bit of a memer, and then immediately talks about how the meme they posted is how, quote, the trans community online is toxic and gatekeepy, which is all in all true for most communities online. It's just interesting how painting this as exclusively a trans problem is his main aim here. It's transphobic. If you're wondering what the problem with that is, it's that it's transphobic. Thank you. Zeta has said to him, True. I might get cancelled for this. And his response is basically, who cares, Lamau? In their post regarding their apparent cancellation, his editor references Vosh's post that he used as an explanation of using the tactical N-word. And for those of you who are blessed <laughs> enough to not know what this is, what an this legendary is a Vosh where post. Vosh, in a debate with a fascist, just said the N-word with the hard R, literally just as a tactic to get shock and loads of views and controversy. Yep, and this is something that Xanderhal classifies as a good meme. He also references Vosh's rant about queer people online, which was extremely queer phobic again, because of what I mentioned previously about attaching toxic online behaviors to one marginalized demographic. It's super annoying because yes, some people are toxic online, but just log off. You don't have to see those people. This isn't a huge thing to worry about for most people, but you see the people that Zander Hall's actually talking about here are just people that disagree with him. And he can't have that. Oh no, God forbid. He starts to say that the way to solve this problem is to make sure that there are less transphobic and queerphobic parents out there. Kind of trying to reinforce the fact that his de-radicalization is the solution to a lot of problems. Not that, you know, he should reflect on some of the more problematic aspects of his behavior that these so-called woke scolds point out. Now. I'd be lying if I said that people didn't go too far online. Absolutely they do. I've seen hundreds and thousands of babies first political opinion and people who really go ham and puritanical on issues that aren't really that much of an issue once you put them under a close analysis. But if I thought that people doing that was a problem, I'd be doing a video about them and not debate bros. 
It's good that people are exploring the boundaries of our language and how the roots of certain words can be harming people and how certain attitudes and behaviors need to be changed. It shows that our culture is evolving into one that's based on love and compassion rather than hateful exclusion. And it wow. can also show that we have a long way to go when it comes to people resorting to puritanical, Protestant, colonialist rhetoric when trying to change people's minds about things. Jeez, that was but a lot of... That's all by the by. There's one thing that's extra telling in this video. He says that woke scolds need to be de-radicalized in the same way that Nazis do. Oh. So what does that tell us about Xanderhal? Xanderhal, what do you mean by that? So if you're a Zan fan and you've made it this far in the video, I gotta <laughs> say Zan kudos fan. because most Debate Bro fans don't really watch the video and simply react to things out of context and then claim that I'm doing the same thing. Wow. Despite the hours and hours and hours of content that I've watched from your special boy. And some of you are sat there saying, well, no, Xanderhal is not a lib. He's not a centrist. What do you mean? He's progressive. He's a leftist. All right, all right, all right, all right. Calm down. We're gonna get into it. Just grab a nice drink some snackies, maybe play your favorite Vibby game while you're watching this video. Oh, I am. To it. He's talking to me. If you YouTube page, you'll notice that there isn't a lot about his actual views when it comes to material conditions or class consciousness. A lot of his left-wing content is based on civil and human rights, which he kind of shits all over when he does his woke scold content. So let's go right back to his first video that got a ton of views, how I almost became alt-right. He starts off by saying he never really went into politics and had a fairly progressive mom who taught him why it's wrong to be racist, misogynist, and bigoted in general and that he was super disappointed in the USA and Americans in general when Trump got elected because even he could see that Trump was a bad guy. He then talks about his radicalization through YouTube content. It's so weird listening to this because it's almost like he's talking about himself when he talks about Chris Reagan, who he describes introduced him to alt-right content. He says that Chris described himself as center-left and did a lot of content about how feminism was obsolete in the USA in 2016. Obviously, Xanderhal doesn't do content like that, but he does do content that attacks people that are too left-wing for him or annoy him personally. A lot of similarities, you know? The video is very short, so I'd encourage you to watch it yourself, but the long and short of it is that he went further down the pipeline and saw Charlottesville and the murder of Heather Heyer, and then he saw that that shit was actually really bad and wrong, so he started to lose faith in it. He then talks about how Destiny pulled That's out me, of the dude! Pipeline. He's gonna say good things about me! Somehow blissfully unaware of density, here is a quick recap. He started making content on Twitch when it was still Justin.tv. He did like StarCraft 2 matches and he started doing debate content around 2016. Destiny apparently referred to himself as a libertarian before this, but then called himself a liberal when he heard another streamer call another streamer the F word. Anyway, in Destiny's debate content, he did a lot of- That's not uh, really the greatest of summaries, but okay. Arguing against white supremacists and alt-right figureheads. But now, here's the key thing about this. He kind of always did this from the center ground. Destiny has also admitted to using slurs in private and has defended this, in fact, in multiple debates. He's never been a communist or a socialist or an anarchist. Defended this, in Jeez. fact, in multiple debates. He's never been a communist or a socialist true, or an anarchist. True, true. And has, in fact, argued true. against those ideologies yes. from a capitalist viewpoint. Thank for a God long I have. Time. In fact, Destiny is quoted as saying this about the George Floyd uprisings. The rioting yes! needs to fucking stop. And if that means like white redneck fucking militia are going down dipshit protesters that think that they can torch buildings at 10 p.m., then at this point they have my fucking blessing. Because Amen. holy shit, this fucking shit needs to stop. It needed to stop a long time ago. Base so, yeah, King. This is the guy that saved. Zanderhal. Neoliberal politics are inherently like this. They say, yes, you can have your rights as long as you shut the fuck up about your queerness. Shut the fuck up. That's absolutely what I'm saying. I just wish all queer people and LGBT people just acted like straight people and shut up, I guess. That's exactly what I think. Yes. Greatest summary. Up about your blackness and do your job until you die in poverty like the wage slave that you are. True. Do not question the machine. Yes. You are part of the machine. That's what I What's believe. About this and the reason that I'm bringing this up is because this is exactly where Xander Hall sits nowadays. Albeit slightly to the left of Destiny, he does argue in support of trans rights and Black Lives Matter. In a follow-up to this video in the much longer how I fell down the alt-right pipeline and escaped, he immediately starts by saying, "I also wasn't even a leftist when I made those videos. I was still identifying." as what I now know to be a neoliberal. And then claims Wait, to how become the fuck more do I guess? But only really says that he's a leftist and doesn't really go on much from there. He does say that apparently he was planning to read The Conquest of Bread live on stream, but- Wait, unlike Destiny- Hold on, I was stopping a fact to in my head. What, what did he say? 
longer how I fell down the alt-right pipeline and escaped, he immediately starts by saying, I also wasn't even a leftist when I made those videos. I was still identifying as what I now know to be a neoliberal. And then claims to have become more progressive, but only really says that he's a leftist and doesn't really go on much from there. Back he does more. say that apparently he was planning to re- Fuck. Hold like on. the wage slave that you are. Do not question the machine. You are part of the machine. What's hilarious about this and the reason that I'm bringing this up is because this is exactly where Xander Hall sits nowadays, albeit slightly to the left of destiny. He does argue in support of trans rights and Black Lives Matter in a follow-up to this video in the much longer- Oh, I don't do that? How I fell down the alt-right pipeline and escaped, he immediately starts by saying, I also wasn't even a leftist when I made those videos. I was still identifying as what I now know to be a neoliberal. And then claims to have become more progressive, but only really says that he's a leftist and doesn't really go on much from there. He does say that apparently he was planning to read The Conquest of Bread live on stream, but I can't find that on his channel anywhere. Cringe. So it's likely that he read a bit of it, thought it was going to be too boring and sat True. the idea off. Based. Which is actually fair enough because I think that reading theory on a live stream is extremely boring content and I definitely would not be down for that. But it does kind of show that he's not really interested in that stuff and the vast majority of his other content clearly shows a lack of understanding about how the working class struggle intersects with the civil rights that he supports. What's also interesting to point out is that while Xanderhal says that Destiny saved him from the alt-right pipeline, Xanderhal doesn't appear to have actually ever been debated on his alt-right views. He simply saw an example of right-wing views being torn to shreds in the form of Destiny debating a white supremacist. Base. The major difference between this and other forms of de-radicalization is that it simply made him not a Nazi. It didn't make him a communist, an anarchist, or even a socialist. Thank God. The more and more that Zandhol gushes about Destiny, it becomes clearer and clearer that he has a deep love for the guy. Yes. And that he wants to emulate him in every way. Yes. He says that the edginess of Destiny made him think he was cool, and he made a lot of friends in Destiny's Discord server. Based. Now, the next part is extremely interesting. He talks about our schoolboy Sean's video, The Fate of the Frogmen, a video in which Sean talks about the online alt-right and their slow, sad march into irrelevance. And Zan the Man says that this was the moment that he truly understood what had happened to him. Basically admitting that Sean, a video essayist, made him really understand what had happened to him versus watching the debate with Destiny, which simply made him stop being a full-on Sikh hiling Nazi. True. It's interesting that he talks about learning social structures and disavowing capitalism, but a lot of his content just really isn't about that. One of the most important things to happen over the last year for a lot of leftists is the wave of unionization that's happened across the US and the world. If Xander Hall was covering a lot of this, that'd mean a lot of people learning about a lot of good stuff. He's got one video that's 18 minutes of him covering the Staten Island warehouse unionization, but it's got woefully low views. Hell, I know the feels on that one. My union video and activism content performs terribly. But let's talk about his Joe Biden support. It's so interesting that in this video, quote, why I'm not Bernie or bust and you shouldn't be either, Xander Hall talks about how uh -oh. he loves Bernie Sanders and Joe Biden is a creepy old man who has rape allegations against him. But more recently, he just unironically tweets and retweets Joe Biden's Twitter or pro-Democrat stuff. Zan in this video also talks about how Ruth Bader Ginsburg and how if she dies while Trump is in office, then women's rights, trans rights, and other civil rights are all on the chopping block. Funny then how all that still kind of happened, but he still supports Joe Biden and the Democrats. He focuses in this video a lot about harm reduction, but the harm has been done. It happened under Joe Biden and the Democrats. Wow. And Xander Hall used his platform to tell people that Bernie or bust is a bad thing. Okay, I get it. Not voting for a Democrat in 2020 would have been a disaster. But you didn't need to go full pro-Democrat either. Nuance is a thing and critical support is a thing. The main thing to take away from Xander Holt in this video is this. Yeah. Revolution isn't happening in the foreseeable future. All we can do at this current moment is work within our current electoral system. Anybody who's still burning your bus at this point, there's no changing their minds. Them, okay, they don't give a shit about minorities or August. Why don't we use a sound effect on our videos? I like the boom sound effect, it's dramatic. We need more of it, okay? Anybody uh, in this country um, uh, whose life is on the line in this election. This is such a reductive take, and again, has been proven wrong by the fact that said minorities have suffered under Biden, as we previously discussed. So, the question here rip the queue. Wait, what happened? Hold on. So, put the bomb down, they <laughs> Guy says, together. rip the queen? What happened to, the time to Pokemon? Comes up short and we're Bro. Looking for <laughs> Hilarious, dude. Queen! Pokey! Oh my god, how many variations of that drug are we going to see today? Whoa! Here is this. If Xander Hall loves Bernie so much, 
Why is he so willing to claim that the majority of people who support Bernie don't care about marginalized people's rights? So my theory is this. As we said before, when Xanderhal said he lost a lot of faith in America after Trump was elected, he sees that as the catalyst for him going down the pipeline. So for him, beating Trump is paramount in that election because he sees his radicalization as Trump's fault. Which is true, as far as we can tell, Steve Bannon, who I've talked about on the channel before, was a bigwig on Trump's campaign and literally wanted to radicalize gamers to the far right. However, what seems to be more important to Zan and the nuance that Bernie or Busters have a point or that even Bernie or Busters do care about marginalized people is that Trump gets beat in the election. To Xanderhal, this is a cathartic thing that he needs, and to be fair, it actually was for a lot of Americans and people around the world. Especially people in a similar position to Xanderhal who got radicalized by alt-right beliefs and then realized that they'd been taken for a ride. It's kind of like revenge for them, if you will. See now, what happens with revenge is that you become a bit blinkered and you lose sight of the bigger picture. Neoliberals are actually primed for this kind of worldview. You know, it's the I'm all right, Jack mentality. Uh, also, a bit of a sidetrack, but I just want to point out in this video, he says this? Nuking Japan was justified, though. It's sort of like a, a hard discussion, but yeah. Um, from what I've seen with all the arguments, it does seem like it, like the the good does outweigh the bad, and a really it's like the train, it's like the the trolley problem. I want to agree with him, but that sound effect just shows me how fucking stupid he is. Like, was nuking Japan justified? Yes. <laughs> oh, must not have been. <laughs> must have been a horrible decision. It must have been so bad. You know, it's a really fucked up situation, but we're not going to talk about that right now. What? Xanderhal then goes on to talk about- Imagine supporting any US foreign policy de decision ever in your entire life. Imagine even supporting a single one. Like how fucking stupid and naive and brainless do you have to be to think that the US ever made a good foreign policy decision ever? Boom sound effect. Ever. Boom sound effect. About all the bad things that are going to happen if Trump gets reelected. Um, such as- the US will slip further into fascism. Roe v. Wade will get overturned. The attacks on LGBTQIA plus people will increase and continue. He also focuses on COVID-19, saying that it will continue to ravage the US unchecked. Let's uh, take a look at what happened under Biden. Um, the US has slipped further into fascism. Roe v. Wade has been overturned. Attacks on LGBT- Pretty sure the Roe v. Wade argument was in 2016, Chief. But QIA plus people have increased and continued. COVID-19 is still ravaging the US unchecked. What's really interesting about Xander Hall and his ilk is that they are obsessed with electoral politics and seem to see it as the be-all and end-all despite identifying themselves as leftists and in some cases anarchists. From a more critical point of view in which you can easily observe and analyze electoral politics to be milk toast in achieving anything good at best, True. we understand that the most important thing to do especially nowadays is to organize, create instances of direct action and mutual aid in order to remove dependence on the state, build dual power and eventually sever all ties with those who claim to governors. This is the way. While Zan did indeed cover the unionization of the Amazon warehouse in Staten Island, this seems to be the only bit of his content that covers any kind of dual power structures at all. And to be honest, I think this is why Xander Hall and his community have such a hard time listening to marginalized people who criticize him. Because his content is focused on working within the system, trying to change said system from within. Kind of like a guy who joins the police force to try and make it better and just like said cop you either end up getting bullied out with a force true no one can do anything good point. ever from within any systems ever yes king go off so i want to preface this segment with this preface I'm going to be talking or about preface one of my best friends, Sophie from Mars. <laughs> she is one of my favorite people she's one of my co-hosts on red planet she makes me laugh she has helped me build my channel to what it is today. She reinvigorated my love of all things based and her eloquent commentary on the state of the world. Wait, what's the what difference when you upgrade today this? Today in order to improve the lives of people has inspired me to do the activism that I am involved with today. So in short, I'm biased. However, I'm well aware that bad faith actors won't care either way. So of course I'm going to be biased as fuck. <sighs> do you want to drag him on? He's watching anyway. Guys, been watching my video on stream for about 20 minutes. Audience fans are giving me hate engagement. They are extremely mad. Oh, these types of people will never um, talk to me. Oh, he even says it below. No, I will not have a conversation with your boy. He's literally made with Nazis. The people that do video essays will only ever do video essays because they can never be confronted on any of their beliefs. <laughs> that's, that's always going to be the case. But that's all good. We're used to it at this point. In defending my friends. Fuck you. 
it's rad and cool and good actually to be biased and defend your friends. Also, I think the main what? thing to point out, in case you didn't figure it out already, is that I'm extremely biased against debate bros anyway. So if you make we noticed, of this video is that I'm biased, then, well, duh. It's actually cool to be biased against things that are bad. Also, it's one letter away from... <laughs> what? That's such a stupid point. It's okay to be biased against things that are bad. Wouldn't that be the time when it's... Mo like, if you were ever going to be biased, wouldn't it be against things that are either bad or good in your perception? Isn't that literally the only point in your life when you would be biased? It's not that you're going to be biased against neutral things. So if there was ever a time to protect from bias, wouldn't it literally be in things you're in favor of or against things you're like opposed to? Wouldn't that be the only time you'd ever be worried about bias? <laughs> okay. Xander Hall made a video earlier this year in May. It's Good called one, Lefty Chief. YouTuber Sophie from Mars is a lying joke. Now, I don't know why he didn't put any spaces in Sophie's name there. Uh, just a bit weird, but let's move on. Now, the first thing I want to draw your attention to is how many views this video got. It's over 30,000, and his videos where he talks about unions is at a measly 4K. And I want you to remember this before we get into this segment. Every piece of content that Xander Hall makes where he is attacking a marginalized person, be it a woman, a trans person, a black person, gets so many more views than any of his other content. His followers fucking love drama. Now, this video sucks for many reasons, but- To be fair, that's probably true of everybody's channel, I would imagine, right? Like, I wonder what this guy's most popular videos are. Actually, I don't know. This guy's a really small YouTuber, so maybe not. Well, so, two of his top three most popular videos is Vosh is not your ally and Xander Hall is not your ally, which are probably drama-ish videos. You're attacking a specific creator, like, so it seems like even your audience isn't immune to that. But I mean, I don't think anybody's audience is, right? Like, what are like what his fourth lowest view video is activism. Get inspired, get started. Well, I guess your audience must all just be drama farmers that hate activism, I guess. Unions, why are they so important? Sitting in the middle of the channel. I guess nobody in your audience cares about unions, right? <clears throat> I can't wait for a month from now when Destiny is not your ally is the next video. I'm sure he's working on it. But let's just have a look at the comments before we watch the video. And there's a reason that I'm doing this, and I'll tell you in a bit. Jesus fucking Christ, the aggression in her tweet. I don't see how people cannot see through such relentless, extreme language. It's a red flag, and I think there's a word for it, but I can't think of it. Oh, well. She couldn't just casually hate Bosch. It needs to be a great danger for everyone. Literally worst person ever. Which is wild, coming from someone who made video on Proud Boys. Okay, this one's funny as fuck to begin with, implying that there is aggression in a tweet. The reply is also extra funny because it's like, oh, you know, she's calling out someone who made video on Proud Boys. We don't even know the context of the video. It could be a video like saying that the Proud Boys are good. <laughs> it feels a bit disheartening to think of what little chance uh, I can give you. He's using the straw man voice. This is an unapproved debate tactic. Uh... We've passed the YouTube resolution 7248 against this tactic. You cannot use the straw man voice for other people's opinions. It is not an approved tactic. But please remember that you're so important and significant that they already have an opinion on you, while at the same time, they're not even known really outside their circle. Okay, this is super cringe. Calling Xander Hall important and significant and then to imply that Sophie's a nobody? Can you not understand numbers? Like, can you not see the difference here? Happy year, everyone. Let's see who's correct here. Who is the nobody? Let's break it down. Xander Hall, coming in strong. 71,000 subs, pulling 400 to 700,000 views a month. 300 to 700,000 views a month. Sophie from Mars is a uh, 30 to 200,000 views a month. She used to do a bit more. Looks like she had a couple a couple of big videos a while ago. Pulled some subs from it. That Sophie person is the one who made Bad Bunny cry on stream. <laughs> oh, when Bad Bunny did her trans apology tour or bi apology tour. I don't remember who she was apologizing to at that point in time. Um... Hmm. 
I don't know. It looks like uh, if we look at the numbers here, it looks like Xander Hall's more right than wrong on that. I genuinely don't understand some of this stuff. I imagine Soapy's motivated reasoning is plain to see for most people who are being even slightly critical. So these angry Twitter rants aren't going to be particularly convincing for most. The audience for these tweets has to just be other people who hate Vosh, Zadahal, etc., which is bizarre. This cottage industry seems organic because I think most of its contributors seem genuine, but it's functionally the same kind of astroturf entity which artificially gets created in other political online spaces all the time, so I wouldn't rule it out. There can't be much money in the anti orbiter industrial complex, so I just can't see why anyone participated in it for business reasons, but they do seem determined to make an anti Vosh Zan the new meta. I don't think it has much chance of success, though. Oh boy, where Ooh. to start with that one? Um, but I'm not really here to debate these comments. I'm just kind of here to show what kind of a picture is being painted about my friend. So let's move on. A lot of SAS just seem to viscerally hate streamers as a group at a level that strikes me as bizarre and true. unwarranted. What's the dealio? Okay, um, uh, does this true. motherfucker know that there are more streamers than Xanderhol and Vosh? Sophie's, as I said, one of my best friends, and I've been a political streamer for most of my content creation career. There are also plenty of other leftist Twitch streamers who do not do debate content. Like, what are you talking about? I think it's honestly the Twitter anti-gaff culture. You get a lot of engagement for, um, actually comments, and less talented video essayists thrive off that shit. Meanwhile, Kinda Twitch true. is a live yeah. format, and every streamer that does it long enough is gonna say some shit that either sounds weird out of context, was wrong but poor thought out, usually refined later, or just misspoken, so they're an easy target. This is another huge assumption here. As I said, I've been streaming for a long time, six years in fact, and no one has out of contexted any of my content, and I know I'm good. Well, no offense, bro, but you have 6,000 subs. It's probably not many people that engage with you at all. <laughs> I mean, not to be an asshole, but I mean, like, I don't know if that comparison is we've got some stuff slightly wrong in that time. You ever wonder why it's like always the debate bros that get this kind of stuff? It's always the debate bros who are clipped out of context or, oh, they just misspoke. It's a live stream format. Everybody's going to get some stuff wrong eventually. So from all these comments, we're getting something. We're getting a picture of our Sophie. They're building a profile of someone who their debate king does not like. And so it makes it easier for them to not like her either. There are also multiple comments saying, I used to follow Sophie. Now I just can't. So Ooh. what could it have been that Sophie did that was so reprehensible in the eyes of these people? What did she say and why did she say it? From these comments, it really sounds like she's a hypersensitive, overbearing, terminally online monster. So what is it? What happened? Cherry Bread is quote tweeting Sophie in bad faith here about something that actually happened. Now, I have to bring this up because this is something that's mentioned in this tweet. Yeah. So the sex cult stuff. Okay. I was actually going to include the sex cult drama in this video, but uh -oh. the main victim who spoke out against this has categorically said that she does not want people making content about what happened to her anymore. And so in situations like this, it's incredibly important to center the victim's voice. So I will not be talking about this stuff. Convenient. However, with all that in mind and my actual knowledge of what happened, it is a extremely relevant thing for people to bring up about Xanderhal. So apparently just for believing victims, Sophie here is being labeled as a bad faith actor who is spreading lies about the community. Really interesting here that this is about what the trans, a trans community support network that does a lot of exposés on gender criticals and TERFs. The tweet in question here is when what the trans asked trans people who support Vosh why they support him when he's been so transphobic in the past. It didn't make sense. What the trans then talks about is how it was absolutely Vosh fans that Dogpile reported this tweet to get the account suspended. As I said, this is an account that helps trans people a lot. What the trans even mentions that gender criticals and TERFs normally don't bother mass reporting trans activist accounts. They tend to focus on popular cis allies or popular trans people themselves. I want to draw your attention back to this comment on the video. The aggressive tone being described here is not something that you can take from words on the screen that is Sophie's tweet. However, Xanderhal seems to be trying out for an Oscar here. His fans are belligerent, obnoxious, creepy chuds who harass and shame other content creators for expressing any disagreement with him in ways no other's community, no other creator's community ever does, ever does. Ever. So when Xan first stops reading the tweets in this hilariously villain-esque way, he says that, by the way, nothing here makes sense. 
He's clearly trying to paint her as having a breakdown and being unintelligible. This is something that we see debate bros do a lot, especially when they're attacking trans people who criticize them. <laughs> True. Specifically. Remember, every time you attack a trans person, it is always transphobic. There is literally no other basis by which you could ever, ever, ever attack a trans creator because trans people are perfect. And if you're attacking a trans person, it's because you are transphobic and it's always transphobic. It's the only basis by which a trans person could ever be attacked. Thank you. Thank you, white, cis, heteronormative, fucking ever ally to save the trans people. Thank you, God. And this is to paint the idea that they're pushing too far in their politics and they spend too much time online and don't really have much interaction in the outside real world. This couldn't be further from the truth and not just in most of the trans women that debate bros send for online, but Sophie in particular. She has literally two videos here of her going and speaking at trans rights protests. This is oh more God. activism than I've seen from literally any fucking debate bro. So, okay, talking about bad faith, this is bad faith in its entirety. While Zander Hall is talking about this, his chat further adds to the narrative that Sophie is a monster, calling her a psycho amongst all the bad faith arguments. Who is this Sophie? It's not the Sophie I know. The one that I've spent literal days with who loves and cares about her friends. She loves and cares about her comrades so much and is desperate to get people to change the horrific world that we live in. I certainly wouldn't call her a psycho. Just look at how easily his audience eats this shit up. And it's kind of funny because like, we kind of have to discredit almost everything this guy says because by his own admission, it's his friend, so he's gonna be biased against it. It's just funny that he said that earlier. It was a really dumb statement, but. Remember, this is an audience that has a huge overlap with Destiny and Borsch. That's me! And so this is the main point in the video where I wanna show that Xanderhol really doesn't understand the meaning of the word ally. An ally is not someone who uses marginalized people in their community to win arguments or support their biases. It's really funny because in my video that I did on Vosh, I had so many people in my comments telling me that it's good and correct to criticize Blair White and Candace Owens. And no, for a start, if you're cis and white, it isn't your place to focus on those people. It isn't what? your place to tell trans people and black people who best represent their community. Of course, those individuals mentioned are wrong about a lot of stuff. And it is an ally's duty to understand that marginalized groups are not monoliths and that these people don't represent the communities as a whole. No, if you focus on that stuff- Anybody, that's like, that's the second keyword. It's colonizer and then fucking people that say uh, ally. God, the whole concept between like allyship or whatever is so like, is so cringe, ugh instead of amplifying and signal boosting and supporting other creators who do that work, you are certainly not an ally. It is absolutely not for cis people to say that a certain trans woman who disagrees with you is unhinged and bad, and then use the example of impressionable people who are already predispositioned to support you in your community in order to say that they are wrong. Where's this overwhelming majority, Zan? Where are the figures? How many trans people are in your audience? And how many trans people support what Sophie has said here? Have you done the research? Have you done the polling? Of course you haven't, because you are the terminally online individual who simply Ooh. uses queer people for content and doesn't support us in any actual tangible way. And that's the fucking T. Check out what he says here Ooh. at the end of him reading. The here we go. Big own coming up. Boundaries are not the line by which you should judge the moral character of YouTubers and streamers in this space or any public figure. <laughs> yeah. Yes, Xanderhal. You are so right, dude. Xander Holt even says that someone's political beliefs could be a good indication of their moral values, which is pretty funny because he supports the Democrats unironically and they what? are constantly throwing marginalized people Supports the, the Democrats? Just like him. So later in the video, he says this. Uh, you will find four times out of 10, I'd say, that a content creator in your lane that you've discovered who you might want to collab with, become friends with. Imagine supporting the Democrats. Enjoying their content and becoming sort Cringe. of a fan of in a way already hates you before you even know their name or before you even knew they exist. It's absolutely wild that he said that with no self-reflection on why this would be. Maybe the reason that people don't want to work with you and that your reputation precedes you is because you're a fucking man-child who throws his toys out of the pram every time a woman online disagrees with you. Ooh. Why would anyone want to work with someone like that, dude? One of the main things to take away from this 13 minute video is that he talks about why Sophie is bad for a grand total of two minutes and a couple of seconds, give or take. In those two minutes, it's mainly hyperbole and ad hominem attacks. 
He doesn't deep dive into any of Sophie's content or any of her tweets. He just rambles about how she's a terrible person. Xander Holt also uses a sanest term here in the beginning of his video. The word in itself is widely regarded as a word that should never be used in any context. It's the shortening of schizophrenic. On the point of sanism, Xander Holt seems to really focus on the fact that anyone who disagrees with him has mental issues. Now, as an ADHD, okay. OCD, and anxiety having boy and big advocate for mental health awareness, what I like to try and remind people as often as I can is that pretty much everybody has mental health issues. It's kind of part and parcel of living under capitalism. So oh my God. It's like cringe after cringe after cringe. You're like on the mat and this guy's still hitting you with the cringe takes you're not a good ally you can never say anything about bad representation for trans people everybody has mental illness i have ocd acd abc oh uh, also that's part of being under capital like please stop oh my god meanwhile is calling me racial slurs on twitter like please stop this scapegoat is kind of one that you could use for just about anybody if you do like a minute or two of digging into their content or social media posts. Also, this big thing where he implies that people with mental issues need validation from the internet, from fake internet points, is a huge sweeping statement that misses a lot of important things to remember. Namely, that not everybody with bad mental health issues is actually on the internet. This paints a pretty bad picture of people like me who suffer from learning disabilities, are neurodivergent, and or suffered from structural sanism and or ableism. The How many things does this guy have on his fucking rap sheet? Holy fuck. He's like my Twitter profile, but in real life. Important thing to remember about this is that Sophie, a trans woman, received a relentless amount of harassment, not just from Xander Hall's community, but from debate bro communities as a whole, just for this thread. This two minutes of hyperbole and conjecture have resulted in some of the worst harassment that my friend has ever seen. And if you know about wow. the effects that online harassment has on people, then you don't need me to tell you just how bad that was for so Jesus. It actually makes me sick just how easy these nerds could turn their communities against marginalized people. It's disgusting. True. And listen, it doesn't matter if you have disclaimers in your video or in your description saying, please don't harass them. Please don't harass them. That's not what I want. Because the very nature of drama content and debate culture on the internet has already primed people to behave in that way anyway. So I want to go back to the comment section again here, just to bring this up. She works with Bad Bunny. That's all <laughs> you need to True. know. True, that is so all you need to know. The community here are implying that Sophie's relation to Kira Chat's old name Bad Bunny and another of my good friends is another reason for steering clear of her. But what exactly has Kira done? Okay, so <laughs> the Kira Chat situation is a little bit different to the Sophie situation. Uh -oh. And while I don't want to say that one form of harassment is worse than the other with this, I do want to point out that my friend Kira has had outright misogynist harassment directed towards oh my from God. huge YouTube channels such as Penguin Zo, aka Critical. He's really going YouTube for the podcast, Bad Bunny simp now. And pretty much every single debate bro you can think of since 2020 and a little bit earlier, I think. I've been in Kira's Twitch community for a good few years now, and of course she is one of my co-hosts on Red Planet. The main issue that these huge YouTubers had with Kira is this clip that I'm sure some of you even recognize. How did my whole speech about how I need subs and to get the stream going? If you like wow, he picks the dumbest fucking clip. How disingenuous. And if he's really this close to her, I know he knows the 50 million highly problematic things that she said. And this is the one that he goes for. Wow, bro. Real brave. Nice one, dude the content blah 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 how that results in zero subs there are regulars here five dollars a month now as most people in Kira's community know this attitude that she has is a stream persona she's got one of the nicest most understanding communities that i've ever been a part <laughs> of on twitch and she really does a lot of amazing content and shines a light on issues that are woefully underrepresented in the online leftist twitch space for example at the moment recently she's been going hard on the israeli genocide of palestinians but for some reason men on twitch.television and youtube.com cannot stand to see a woman doing political content and it's just actually so disgusting dude like imagine it's talking about how you shouldn't hide behind minority identities and then trying to hand wave all the legitimate criticism of bad money of which there is a fuck ton of as just sexism how gross just absolutely need to make a takedown video of her because she is just so bad 
If Bad Bunny doesn't have a negative opinion about you, you're not doing enough for progress. Bit of a fucking telling name there, terminally online leftist. <laughs> you're just implying that if she doesn't like you, you're a good person? I wouldn't go after her for being a clout chaser. All YouTubers and Twitch streamers do this to an extent. The difference is that Bad Bunny has absolutely no principles or ideology True. other than what her gay clout vandal on society blah. True. Hmm. I have no idea who she is, because I really don't care about her, but this behavior reminds me of the quote-unquote inclusive Karens that love the sound of their own voices way too much at retail. I just met one today, and she was ranting about boots not being inclusive for thick people, which I agreed, and tried to lecture me about shoe size differences for men and women. I just phased out from there. Afterwards, she left 20 pairs of shoes lying all over the floor for me to pick up and resort <laughs> after she comment? dumped her spiel. Jeez. That's the kind of energy I'm getting right now. Thank you, Barbara Worst Woman. Are you trying to say like wham? Oh, sorry. If you're like a new YouTuber and you're here, so the Kira Chats person was a person that I found and I de radicalized, oh, believe it or not, like three or four years ago. She was a huge, edgy anti SJW. We had a conversation and she talked about how she'd never date black people. She thought bisexual people were disgusting. Um, she was a huge fan of like Opie and Anthony and like other like edgy online content shit. And when I ever approached her about some of these conversation topics, I would be like, oh, like, don't you think that it, like, if you say like you'd never date a black person, it doesn't like maybe you might have some unanalyzed or unexamined things in your mind and she's like it sounds to me like you're just talking about white guilt um she also had a discord server where i think she had like a hundred pages of her using the f slur <laughs> and the n-word <laughs> that she f deleted and then claimed none of it was real <laughs> and she got away with it too and then dipshit people like this guy cover for her by saying oh the only reason people hate her is because the five dollar clip um you can go and find your own shit on this i'm not gonna watch like a million bad bunny clips but like i for one would never I wouldn't have I would never be involved with a guy who's bisexual I couldn't do it Just, there might be exceptions obviously when I say I couldn't I, I wouldn't be attracted or I'm not attracted uh obviously if it's like obviously there could be exceptions all you super literal nerds out there but like I don't I don't like if a guy's like having sex with other guys and then he's like, oh, maybe I'll try having sex with you. I'm like, uh, racist and sexist. Please don't say that. Even black people. If you found me a black bisexual man, I might throw up in my mouth at the thought of, of sexual um, contact with him. But, um, and then these were her fucking locks on discord. Um, We've got the N word for a few times. You know, you just like to catch that. Now, this is back in 2017. I think she was only like 31 when she said this. So maybe she's grown and changed. Um, where's our F slurs? Oh, she, it, was, it wasn't like 17 pages of her using the F word, too. Somebody's got it. Doombug has a tweet out there somewhere. But, um,. Yeah. Anyway, I'm just saying that, like, for people, um... <clears throat> Where's it right here? Fourteen pages. Damn, that's impressive. But the, um... For the record, if you use slurs in the past, I'm not here trying to condemn you for it or convict you for it. I don't care. I I've used a lot of slurs in the past when I was a programmer, for sure. Um, so people are doing it. Uh, you know, I'm not here to hold that against you. It's just funny that she did all this and then she basically denied any of it ever happened ever. She went from being hardcore like anti-SJW to being a hardcore communist and then f losers like this guy will come on the internet and go, oh, well, the only reason people ever didn't like her is because of the $5 joke. Which I think I actually, I might have supported her through that one. I know I supported V, because I think it's funny. I think it is funny to bully people that watch streams all fucking day, day long and can't subscribe for five bucks. I think that's some funny shit. Um, but the, um, yeah, but anyway, what a, what a fucking loser. You did support on that? Okay, good. She just said it really bad. Um, worse than V said it. She said it real bad. But. Oh, like anti-SJWs do with your name? I don't know what's going on there. So the comments here are positioning her as a clout chasing woman who simply does things for money and not because she has any actual moral standpoints or <laughs> ideology at all. Kind of so true. It's also worth mentioning that Kira, just like Xanderhal, had a bit of a chud phase. 
One that she's actually really open about and references regularly really? on her stream today. Does she now? good to see because when people are unlearning a lot of the stuff they learn in formative years regarding politics and people's civil rights, they can often forget that it was incredibly easy to fall down the rabbit hole of alt-right opinions. Something that Xanderhol should be incredibly familiar with, no? Considering... this. He also said in his last video on Sophie and what? Hunter Avalon, who is a former right-wing Nazi white supremacist conservative, is an example of someone who's- Hunter Avalon was a former Nazi fascist? <laughs> Wait, what? I'm pretty sure Hunter Avalon was at worst one of the anti-SJW bros. I don't think he was ever a fucking alt-right Nazi. Holy shit. This. He also said in his last video on Soapy that Hunter Avalone, who is a former right-wing Nazi white supremacist conservative, is an example of someone whose politics were bad, but is a good person. Jesus. But apparently that grace is not extended to Kira Chats. Wonder why? He goes on to say that he found out that he was banned in Kira Chats stream and then says... Now, would you guys like to guess what... Wait, what is this? Um, um, Bad Bunny, Kara Chats, has actually had, like, a ton of, <clears throat> a ton of abuse directed at her. Um, and that's not something that I'll deny at all. So, um, Bad Bunny does this thing with her chat where she basically is, like, she per she does, like, a fin dom bit with them. So the whole $5 a month thing, do you guys remember the $5 a month? Um, that was, like, a bit that she was doing. And so that got taken um, and blown up, and all these people were like, wow, look at this greedy bitch. Wow, look at this girl. But the whole thing is that it's, like, a joke with her community. Um, so that, I do really think that um, he is correct, that she got a ton of hate for that. Um, but, uh, again, I don't know what this has to do with building the case that Xander Hall is not an ally. Oh, Merrick is a Xander Hall friend. She's probably also slightly friendly towards Bad Bunny. Oh, we've drawn up complicated battle lines. Uh-oh. Exactly got me banned and blocked by uh, Bad Bunny here. Now, it's not because uh, of any, um, I'm, I'm not like trans or gay or anything like that or bi, so it's not because of her bigotry. So I, I will let you guys know it is not because I am part of any marginalized groups that uh, Bad Bunny has um, a bigotry towards. <laughs> well, I see what you've done there, Xander Hall. You have made a loaded <laughs> statement. You presented our friend Kira as a bigot without actually providing any evidence that she is a bigot. <gasps> He's not gonna go over any of the logs or statements. I know, the thing that's sad is I know he knows about these because I'm sure she's gotten like a lot of hate, like modern day. Is he just gonna pretend that these don't exist? Really, dog? Uh, now, and that that is a reason that she would ban you from her community now. Or that even when she was a bigot in any way that she would like ban you for being bisexual Wait, why am I doing red trans? circuits like this? He then talks about how she had a bit of banter with him when he went into a stream one day and she asked him what he was up to today and when he said he would be streaming later she popped off at him. Now, it kind of sounds to me like she was having a bit of banter with him considering that a lot of streamers think that that is self-promo. It literally sounds to me like the kind of joke that me and Kira would share if I went into her chat. Just as a heads up, this idea that, like, Bad Bunny just jokes with people has been one of the biggest criticisms that her community and people in the past have had against her is because she is horribly abusive when it comes to humor. Um, she just... I'm somebody that has very edgy, very cynical, very dry humor, and I could never tell when she was joking with her community. The only way that our joking worked in real life was because I'm able to be very dry as well, and nothing she says bothers me because I don't care. So it's funny. I'll go as hard as she wants until she starts crying, which she never did, to be fair. She has a very, very, very dry sense of humor. But um, she doesn't know when other people can't tell when she's joking. I remember, I've told this story a few times, I remember one of the craziest times in my life was, um, I think it was when I was in Seattle when we were hanging out. We were at a um, we were at a restaurant and we're sitting across from each other and she's um, ch chatting on her Discord and then I take a look at what's going on and I'm looking at it and I'm like, bro, you are like, you guys are like roasting the fuck out of this dude. And she's like, what do you mean? And I'm looking at this chat and her whole Discord is like going hard on this guy. And she's like blowing him up over something. And I'm like, you guys are like, you guys are like shitting on this guy hardcore. Like, I think he's like pretty bothered. This, and I knew who the guy was. Like, this guy's been in your community for a long time. She's like, oh no, 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 trust me. This is how we joke. And I'm like, 
I don't think he's joking. She's like, no, 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 trust me, okay? This is how we're all joking, we do this. You just don't know my community. And I'm like, okay. And then later on, I think like an hour or two later, I think we were, we were either at the hotel or some other place, and she's laughing, I'm like, what's going on? And she's like, look at this guy. That guy was DMing her from her chat, and he's like, hey, I don't know if you're like actually mad at me. Like, it seems like you guys are really upset and I'm not sure what I did wrong. And she's still attacking him in DMs. And I'm like, it seems like this guy's bothered. And she's like, no, 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 you don't understand. Me and this guy go way back. This is how we joke with each other. And I'm like, he seems like he's really upset. I don't think he's joking. And he, that guy left her community, obviously, a little bit later. But it's like, bro, are you serious right now? Like, holy shit. Um, was it this? Um, no. It, it was later on. Why were you ever friends with her? Because I, because our, she has a personality type that I get along with really well. I like people that have very dry, very mean sense of humor. But I don't use that on everybody. I turn it off. Obviously, I'm not gonna like go hard. It's not a joke. Her community is entirely abusive and insanely dog pilot. Yeah, I know. Um, she has a huge complex about people leaving her community too because nobody sticks around. I know that too. We talked about that a lot in person. How she's like, I don't know why people like leave my community so much. And we had a huge conversation about it, but she just didn't understand. Um. Here's another thing where I don't think she realizes that like, she. I actually felt bad watching Mike um, because Mike was like, um, Mike was, I'm trying to think of a nicer name for soy. Mike was like a pushover who was like, probably felt like he was batting out of his league with, with Bad Bunny as my guess, that she's like somebody that he should have been with. So he was like very, very conciliatory towards her, never stood up for himself. She abused the fuck out of him constantly. And he, um, he just couldn't handle it. But she's like, she's roasting him for the whole time on this stream. It, while he's in the background, like being like shy about it. Hold on. I don't know, probably go off. Maybe I'll, maybe I'll turn the, I, I don't want to dox them. So I want to like not show any travel between. Sure, sure. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. The space between. If it was my place, I would be less like, you know, it's my doxing. It's like, I don't want to dox like my friends. <laughs> That's like so much worse. Except, like, I, I like, can care less, the look goes out. Right, right, yeah, but... Uh, Hold on. Perhaps, yeah. He's got super low emotional intelligence for whatever reason. That's what surprises me, because I didn't think he would have a low... She's just talking about Mike right now. Intelligence. For me? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so, they're gonna be here in two minutes. Okay. Mm. Dad, I'll miss you. No, no, they'll be back. Well, I know, but I'll miss them for right now. Of course we're gonna see them like tomorrow. The shitty, non-sub, shit-stir people. Well, oh, they'll yeah. They'll be back very soon. Aw. He thinks you're kidding. He still thinks I'm kidding. He still thinks I'm kidding. <laughs> I don't think you're kidding. Really? No, I don't think you're kidding. You did really? And then you gave me this fucking smile. This like, has to be a bit, right? No, Nicole just has a very, very, very fucking aggressive personality and she doesn't know when to turn off ever. And Mike is like, find a nice word for Sim. Like that's what Mike is. So funny to you. You think this is all funny. It's very upsetting. I don't have to think you're kidding to smile. <laughs> yeah, you understand that smiling is also born out of uncomfortable. Be fair. Maybe that's my reaction to it. Well, then your genuine reactions to things are really unlikable. Well, okay, but I'm gonna do a piece of advice that I myself like stand by and have learned over many years. Um, you always expect someone to be like on your level and understand. How the hell should Mike respond to her? Mike shouldn't be in a situation with somebody like this because he's always gonna get abused. He needs somebody that's like a lot more. Uh, understanding or a lot more careful, I guess. But that's probably true of most people that be around Bad Bunny. Being around somebody like this is very, very, very difficult because she never, ever, ever turns off and she's super hardcore all the time. It's like a very... You have the same like emotions that you have and you'll always be just... I like people like that though. I think it's fun. I like the challenge. You know what I mean? Abuse me. Yeah, but this is like a severe mis- This is but severe failure. Look at Mike over here. He's like, oh, oh. they're like both just talking about him. Like he's not even here. <laughs> But like you can't like get mad at, mad okay. at a person because of that. All right. Well, I just, have to, uh, I just can't hang. I just can't. I can't hang out with him then. Sure, but like those, that's emotional differences that you have. You know what I mean? Right. You have to find ways like, to I, I can hang that. out with him like over voice chat. But I can't hang out with him like. Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. too much more than that. How do you handle it when she tried it on you? I was just mean back. It was fun. Bro, the IRL streams that I had with Bad Bunny were probably some of the funniest IRL streams I've ever had in my entire life, okay? She's, that, I, thought it, I thought it was a lot of fun, but I have that type of personality, right? You figure out ways to reconcile those ideas, you know? Or you don't like it, I don't know. It all comes down to where you can stand in this situation. Hold on, we're almost there, guys. No, okay. This Mike is, is gonna get triggered. He's gonna have an outburst. Get ready for it, okay? One thing is smiling when you're uncomfortable. Another thing, if I'm like, yeah, I'm talking about you right now, about how I'm disappointed with you, and they go, really? But again, that's, I don't know. But it's just, it's just it's a yeah, general, okay, if we're gonna get super deep and be like, well, what do words any, even mean? Maybe my words mean something different than your, okay, yeah, everyone's way of communicating theoretically could always be justified in their brain as being appropriate. Sure. So, but that, that, that doesn't stop you from having negative reactions to people's different Absolutely personalities. Not. I'm just giving you a tool to deal with it. I'm not saying that that's how society works. I'm just telling you how I deal with it in my own like, feelings, you know? Like, I, for example, like there are people that do things that are, that are distasteful to me, but... Have I been a little bit bad? No, I process, I process for No, no, I honestly want to know. Like, have no. I been beyond the pale? I mean, no. I... Could but not, not for me, but again, like, I'm a different person. No, so. no. I'm really sorry about the sort of thing. No, I don't give a shit. The problem was I was, I'm going to make excuses, but I was like very, I couldn't step out of the, out of the car. It the seat was so far back. You have to understand that literally most things don't matter to me. So. That's all. That's not, yeah, that's literally a thing that doesn't matter to me. I don't know, um, I'm not like a halfway type person. Like, I've, I've, had, I've had people that have like out. stolen thousands of dollars from me. That, those are things that bother me. Like. Oh, I would never do that. Like, that the, yeah. the thing about me is, I'm either in with you or I'm not. I'm not a like lukewarm person. Sure. So that's just the way it is. Yeah. So what does that have to do with your with anything you just said with the car door stuff? Huh? And the thing about me is I'm not lukewarm with people. What does that have to do with what you were saying to Lucid? They're so just talking about like his different way of like dealing with people. I think there was a segue away from that idea already. Hold on guys, All it's right. coming. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> Mike's just telling her. Uh, my hands are red. Okay, this is the best thing Nicole ever did in her entire life. Thank you so much for turning the camera at least. Thank you, God. We could have missed out on the best content of the year if she wouldn't have been wise enough. Yeah, I'm late on this one. The hard, the, uh, the, the, uh, the granite, a little yeah. bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Here it comes, guys. This feels good, God. <laughs> Good. What did you just do? <laughs> Why is this couch now moved? Did you just hit the couch? I just nudged it. <laughs> oh, shit, they're here. <laughs> I'm sorry. I hate both of these people, so... Um, uh, we're gonna We're gonna reminisce for a little bit. Okay. The volume on the phone. It's it's off. <laughs> this so is their you let them go? driving together. They have the legal right of way. That's Weren't true. you a lawyer? That's right. I broke the law. That's why LA has shitty drivers. All the people who can't drive for shit come here to visit. I have not done anything that was shitty. I was just say it's a big street. I what? Like, I said you you didn't give the passenger the right of way. They had the right of way. Yeah, but they were like, No, they weren't. I saw I was here as well. <laughs> I was right next to you. Well, we had a red light on this major street. So I was making that what? aggressive move so I could get over across the traffic. That's unfortunately that's not how the law works. Yeah, it's true. I hate this thing where you play stupid, like you think I'm not aware of it. And it's really obnoxious and it's just a time waster and an energy waster. <laughs> it's insulting quite literally. It really is insulting to my intelligence. Well, you see, there was a red light, so. No, I had reasons for what I did, doing what I did. I didn't, did I say there was no reason that you had personally? Why are you so good at dealing with her? She seemed way chill right No, it was because when she'd be mean to me, I would just be mean to her. I think those are the types of interactions she likes. But she, now when she's hanging around lefties, that just doesn't exist anymore. But I don't even know if she has the same personality type. I think now she's just like an ultra cucked commie. Like, it's, yeah. All right, well, I, I, uh... Okay, you know what? Just stop. 
your failure. Okay, whatever you say. Imagine backseat driving without having a driver's license. Imagine how having a driver's license and still knowing the rules of the road better than a person with a license and also a degree, like a law degree. I don't know who should be more embarrassed at this point. <laughs> I'm just not rule bound, Chad. Shut up. <laughs> I almost feel bad You're for him. You're a real renaissance man. Almost feel bad for him. Oh, that too. Yeah, I don't we know. Go, we didn't go to bar. Did you two. pay? Um, for parking? <laughs> Did you not pay for parking? He left the lights on the car too. Alright, let's go. Lead the way. Walk quickly. Uh, we're, we're in a rush. We're late. We're late to what? To the rally. Oh. It started two minutes ago. God, it's like talking to a child. I didn't realize that you're so... I... Your la-di-da attitude is why we miss our drinks. You realize that, right? My la-di-da attitude? This, you just said what and realize we're trying to keep on schedule. We were already an hour late. At what point were you going to inject urgency into this evening? Are they still friends? No, Mike hates her now. I think that she's part of the reasons why Mike like went so hard in the weird. I think she broke him. Also, Jameson's been waiting on us for an hour now. I, I was ready to go whenever you were. You were streaming at six o'clock. And then you said I need to eat something. I know, because I took advantage of the opportunity to eat, but I was like, let's leave. I told you, like, we're running late. Oh, it's like talking to my mom. She makes all the excuses in the world why she's like, right. I was, was fine. Thank you. Did they ever date or did he just take all this abuse as friends? They technically did it because I think he broke up with his wife to start dating her. Where's my drink? There's one. You asked? I think it's, all right, actually, I don't know if he broke up with her. I think he cheated on her with Bad Bunny because I think um, there's tweets where she's tweeting out like, just found out my husband or my kid's dad or whatever is like out doing somebody could find a screenshot of those tweets it was a long time ago wasn't his wife pregnant too something like that yeah somebody can find those tweets but what are you having right now oh, it's he drops change makes a scene and didn't even fucking get me a drink Trader. Trader. Oh, amazing god there are so many good clips of them this is like my favorite on stream relationship. That's fine. I the first time Mike tried to touch her in public. <laughs> that's fine. I think that's fine. So if a guy pays for my tab. I think they. I, I'm just. I'm, I'm getting your attention. <laughs> I feel like I touched like uh, a vampire touching holy water. Can I help you? Well, I think they want to go in. Okay. <laughs> that's fine. I think that's fine. So if a guy pays for my tab. I think they, I, I'm just, I'm, I'm getting your attention. <laughs> I feel like I touched like uh, a vampire touching holy water. Can I help you? <laughs> I think they want to go in. Okay. <laughs> there are so many good. Remember, uh, I don't know, a few months ago, there was this girl that was complaining about not getting a $5 donation or something. People just... She knows what she's doing. Notice, <laughs> notice that she does that. And she's antagonizing the sense. And not $5 really don't respect me as a content creator. <laughs> Never talk to Bad Bunny. Oh, this is uh, after the breakup, I guess. Or if they even really truly dated, but... If you're if you're watching this and you're like, hey, I want to stream, you know, I'm going to stream. Learn my lesson. Learn my lesson. OK. And then the simps come to uh, to the rescue. She's an attractive woman. Oh, didn't for act fuck's like a nice person. sake. Did she say Which is what makes frust sexually frustrated incels. Uh, <sighs> you notice the lack of eye contact, the lack of confidence, the slouchy <laughs> cheek uh, posture. That's all hit. I'm gonna send you over to somebody who I actually like. Let me try to find someone like that.
Okay, everybody wants politics. That ain't happening there, Hackstock. That is never happening again. You can find your way over there on your own. Remember, uh, I don't know, a few <laughs> <laughs> Oh, man. Um, people want to know why we hate uh, Mike from PA. Did you know about the bot in her Discord that was called like the Ftron 9000 or whatever and that would call people the f -slur whenever they left her Discord? I, I don't remember, maybe, but... There's a few political memes I wanted to go over. There was a whole video. Political commentator said- 34 minutes. Me and Mike were fighting a long time ago about betting about who would win the primary in Iowa or some shit. I don't remember if I was betting on I think it was just for or against Bernie winning. I might have been voting on, or um, betting on Buttigieg. I don't remember, but um, oh dude, there are so it's there are so many good Mike memes. That guy is just like a fucking loser. There's just so many. There are so many good ones. Like, I can educate people about Bernie Biden electability argument. That's what the who will win. Yeah, I don't want to watch like a 25 minute video on this. We're already like on a diversion of a diversion. Who I want or who's gonna win? Who oh my God. He used to hold over my head the whole time that I like, I played video games and talk about politics. And he's like, oh, I know so much more than you. And he was like wrong in every prediction he made. And he even took back his bets. Didn't you bet on Biden? Yeah, I mean like, I don't remember. It was anywhere from like five to $10,000. I had a $3,000 bet out with that one poker dude. And then I made a few thousand with um, Mo, but that was like the night of, I don't, I don't remember all the, it was somewhere between that. Who I want or who's gonna win? Who you think is gonna win? <sighs> Fuck. I think Biden. <laughs> John pointed to you, how do you have to pick one? <laughs> who I want or who's gonna win? Who you think is gonna win? What an idiot! Fuck. What an idiot! What a stupid f head! What a moron! What a dipshit! Good one. Hey, and you can't say he wasn't informed because two months ago I told him for three hours why Bernie was going to beat Biden. So it's not like he hadn't heard the arguments. He just has bad judgment. One more time for the people in the back. I think Biden. Then it should be. Does anyone have uh, what's can we, anyone have like, OK, hold on. We need some uh, curb your enthusiasm music. Hold on. <laughs> And it's so funny too, like the, the funny thing is that his analysis here was so flawed because I think, something could be wrong, I think the reason why he was so hype on Sanders was because Sanders, Sanders had just come out of Iowa and New Hampshire, or was it just Iowa? And so he's like, oh my God, like he's gonna like destroy him. And I was like, bro, these are like insanely white places. Like wait for Super Tuesday, dude. Like those black states, these black people do not like Sanders, but these guys all deluded themselves into thinking people of color love Bernie Sanders. And if he did well in Iowa, of course he's gonna kill Super Tuesday. But obviously they, yeah, just so stupid. It might've been after Nevada too, maybe, yeah. Nevada? We're gonna do this one more time. We're gonna make this a clip. Who I want or who's gonna win? God, he was so dumb. That's why I have- This whole clip was just uh, I'm sure. him taking his bet back when he started to realize that Bernie wasn't performing as well as he thought he would on Iowa. He said that Pete Buttigieg rigged the caucuses. <laughs> oh my god. Uh, I remember dunking on this dude too. This tweet is from a suspended account. I wonder if that was my tweet. Because this might have been when I had my other Twitter account. Wow, this is bad news for Bernie Sanders when he runs against three people at once in the general. Hmm. Ugh. And then how quickly these tweets change to, I can't believe everybody else dropped out and now all the votes went to Biden. Oh, hmm. Interesting. Everybody made fun of me for this shit. F you losers. Meanwhile, the mi Oh, here it is. Okay. So he thinks that he's ratioed somebody hard on Twitter, which is, you know, as we all know from Kevils, the most important thing in the world you can ever do. Oh my God. What? What? It's usually get between like 200 and 500 likes. That's decent engagement. I'm a smaller Twitter account. I post earnest tweets, not jokes. So I'm doing pretty well on Twitter, but it's fine. To get 802 likes on a reply is hilarious. As meanwhile, the mi- <laughs> Oh no, he was he didn't rehearse this. <laughs> he thought he had more. <laughs> That's so awkward. <laughs> he thought he had more. He just realized it. Oh no.
Play it again. <laughs> Do you see what he's gonna? Meanwhile, the main one only got 100 likes. I need to fucking. For account, I post earnest tweets, not jokes. Play it again, I'm Destiny. I'm doing pretty well on Twitter, but it's fine. <laughs> to get 802 <laughs> likes on a reply is hilarious. As meanwhile, the main. <laughs> and then I posted. <laughs> then he apparently deleted the tweet. This is the it was this is my reply to the original awkward. Okay, we're done. We're done bashing on Mike. He's too easy to bash on. Remember to like and subscribe and follow my YouTube, you losers. You clowns. You mongrel. Wait, can you say are we still allowed to say mongrel or is that racist now? I don't remember. Everyone in this tweet hates you. Kefels, Hassan, Vosh, Mike. Oh my god! It's like the fucking <laughs> Infinity Wars of shitty online political commentators. Is, but apparently this was just like lost on Xander Hall. He just like doesn't understand what like having a bit of a laugh is. So just to explain like why Kira might have made a joke about this. There is a certain sect of Twitter where streamers absolutely pop off about the fact that even saying that you are a streamer or mentioning that you might stream at all in another streamer's chat is the worst thing that you could possibly do and you deserve to be banned from the community for doing that. It's absolutely ridiculous. I have so much to say about streamers who just don't like self-promo, but that's for another fucking time. In all honesty, I think that this was a bit of banter in an attempt to make friends with Xander Hall, who she clearly had heard about previously and knew was a streamer. Then our man Zan says that she started ignoring his messages. Now, listen, Kira's chat goes at a million miles an hour, compared to me anyway, uh, and I find it hard to read all the messages in my chat, and I've only got like a half or even a third of what Kira's chat and viewership has been at some points. So that's that explained. He then says that when he realizes that he was blocked by her on Twitter, he went to her stream to ask her while she was live about why he was blocked on Twitter and he got banned from the Twitch chat too. After which someone told him that she tweeted that she knew that Xander Hall was a creepy debate bro weirdo. And of course, personally, I think that's an absolutely fine reason to ban anybody from your community. Damn. Now, what's really fucking frustrating here is that Xander Hall, again, does no self ref To be clear, I'm pretty sure... Doesn't she get like 200 viewers? Is her chat really moving that fast? Reflection here and turns to the attack on Kira. Well, he'd already begun the attack at the start of the video, but he then goes hard and brings up her past alt-right opinions and even brings up some screenshots that are fairly popular amongst people who like to harass her, where she's said slurs in Discord channels. And all he really does here is just say that she's like a clout chaser and a bigot. And he also talks about how he's got like so much evidence that she's like a grifter and a bigot. But this is all stuff that she's done in the past, dude. And it's all stuff that she's apologized for and has done so much work to unlearn and try and make amends for the bad that she did to people. That nothing really stands up regarding that like you don't so to be clear she said that those uh discord logs the ones where she had like 14 pages of the f word she said those weren't her she never did any of that ever so that's his i, I guess he defends that but <clears throat> don't really have that much evidence that she is a bad person now you're just pissed off that your reputation in how your harmful bastard preceded you once again and it prevented you from networking with someone who is actually a really cool content creator and if you want to talk about how people have got evidence that someone is a grifter and a clout chasing piece of shit well i mean you're watching this video right this video in which I wrote 15,000 words about you doing exactly that. But nah, he spends like 10 minutes talking about how she had harmful opinions in the past and does nothing to talk about the fact that she's left all that behind and realized how bad it was. He just skips a bunch of so-called evidence because there's too much of it. Bro, bro, look at the length of this video. You clearly don't care about this as much as you're saying you do. Again, the point he tries to make here is that when people have had bad opinions in the past, you need to hold them to account forever. Despite his love of Hunter Avalon and other right-wingers who have denounced their alt-right past, even though the time period in which these people turned around was more recent than Kira herself. He then plays an old clip in which Kira says she would not have sex with or date a bisexual guy, which is something I, as a bisexual man, am very familiar with as an opinion. If a guy is like having sex with other guys, 
And then he's like, oh, maybe I'll try having sex with you. I'm like, uh. Oh, he's bringing up some of the clips. Sorry, hold on. I had to post a banger meme. <laughs> I'm here. Shit, I missed the past 20 seconds of this video. Let me listen again, I'm sorry. A bisexual guy, which is something I, as a bisexual man, am very familiar with as an opinion. Past. Even though the time period in which these people turned around was more recent than Kira herself. He then plays an old clip in which Kira says she would not have sex with or date a bisexual guy, which is something I, as a bisexual man, am very familiar with as an opinion. If a guy is like having sex with other guys, and then he's like, oh, maybe I'll try having sex with you. I'm like, uh... <laughs> Now, of course, the way that Kira says it here is problematic for many reasons, but again, we're missing the point that this is something she said in the past and wouldn't dream of saying this nowadays because she understands the harm it would cause. And as a bi guy, I just want to say for anyone listening here, if this is something that you think, fine, I don't want to fuck or date someone who has an opinion like this anyway, and I'm not going to lose sleep about people having opinions like this when I know that there are plenty of people who want to me or date me but if you change your mind about that and realize why you said those things were bad then of course i'm ready and willing to forgive you this is a very popular opinion that people have about m-spec men it's a common thing and people are going to have this opinion because they've been conditioned to by the hierarchies of homophobia and the nuclear family that are imposed on us it's not right and it needs to change and there's a lot of work that needs to be done would he ever give this much cover to somebody being racist I'm so curious to do that, but in the grand scheme of things, in terms of evidence you could use against Kira to point out that she's a hateful person, this is a reach. I also want to point out that someone in Xanderhal's chat here uses the command clip chimp, and Xan's chatbot responds with an emote and a cheeky little <laughs> photographer. <laughs> Sorry. That archive was like, that was my proudest tweet. That was a legendary tweet. F*** her, okay? Zan with the word clippers. Now in Twitch lingo, these are phrases that imply someone needs to clip this content out of context and post it to r slash livestream fails on Reddit, thus instigating harassment towards that person either on Twitter or on their Twitch channel themselves. Maybe they just want to clip because they want it preserved because they think it's a funny moment. Jesus, that's you're reading like really hard into that clip it thing. And you better believe this is something that Kira got harassed for. Albeit, it was a drop in the ocean of the regular harassment that she receives, but that is no excuse. Zan also, for some reason here, says that he doesn't want to come across as defending Bad Bunny, despite the fact that at the start of the video, he said this. So Bad Bunny, uh, I learned about her mostly because of the Destiny drama, and I wasn't entirely convinced by the reasons that Destiny gave for why we ought to dislike Bad Bunny. Like, it just didn't come off to me as entirely, um, like, that like valid for everybody just all of a sudden decide bad bunny's a piece of shit and just disregard her and refuse to engage with her or anything like that or be friends with her just because destiny says she's mean or whatever like it just didn't sit well with me if you value logic and reason and that's a thing that debate bros love to talk about then why wouldn't you take someone's good points along with the bad such as what i'm trying to do in this video but check this out now a lot of people over the years who have had criticism of Bad Bunny have said more or less the exact exact same thing. And I'll admit that I made a counter argument to this, along with people who would defend Bad Bunny, that uh, people who have this opinion are probably just being biased by the fact that she's a woman, and that when a woman engages in this type of humor, it comes off as being bitchy or rude or as narcissistic or whatever. But when men do it, it comes off as, as, as uh, suave or like, oh, what a... He's kind of a douchebag, but he's funny about it, so it's okay, because he's a guy. He's literally correct here, so why does he go back on it? I'll tell you why he goes back on it and calls <laughs> her mean, because that is what his entire channel is all about. Wait, Drama. one more mic clip, I'm so sorry. Does anybody have the clip where he's like, You've been exposed by me, QED! <laughs> Can somebody please give me that one? <laughs> please. That's such a good clip. Clout revenge and grift content. And I can say with 10,000% certainty that Kira is not this evil, mean monster that Zan is making her out to be. I've been in hours and hours of Discord calls with her, personal calls, meetings, DMs, and she is one of the sweetest, most lovely people that you could ever meet. This is a character assassination video, and it is inexcusable. Ex so real quick. <clears throat> Dr. Disrespect made fun of Bad Bunny for the sub thing. He's making fun of her and Mike doesn't realize it. Oh my God.
Oh my God, one more clip after this. Somebody find me the uh, AOC one too, please. Oh my God, the AOC clip is so good. I've been- The thing is- Wow, this only has 980 views and it's from Dr. Disrespect, one of the biggest streamers oh, on the platform. Please. And nobody cares! It's almost like you're sexist! It's almost like you've been exposed right fucking now by me! QED! End of debate! <laughs> Incels hate him. Where's the number one post? I've been the thing. <clears throat> give me the give me the AOC clip. I need it, guys. More context. <clears throat> Mike made a friend, and that friend was black. So if the friend is black, it must be the case that he's pro BLM and he's a Democrat. Boy, uh... What else, what other possibilities could it be? So Mike ends up getting in contact somehow with like AOC's campaign or group of people. And Mike brings this black guy to AOC to introduce them, to show his new black friend off to his uh, favorite Hispanic congresswoman. But the black guy was actually part of Project Veritas. <laughs> so he's harassing AOC while Mike is standing awkwardly in the background. <laughs> awkwardly in the background. And when Mike talks about it on stream, he's like, yeah, I tried to get them to stop and go away. But when you look at the video, you're just standing there in the background. <laughs> Please, somebody give me this. I know somebody's got it. I fell for this fucking guy. Oh. Black yeah. Lives Matter shirt. <laughs> I just, he's a black guy with a BLM shirt. Dude, you must be a liberal, right, dog? Holy shit. Are you down with the resistance? True. He's black. <clears throat> and he was like, oh, uh, I didn't even get a chance to talk to AOC. There's a better video clip of this. Fuck. When I called him a scumbag, they edited it out. They edited it out. Uh huh. <laughs> I'm sure you did, Mike. <laughs> I fell for this fucking guy. Black Lives Matter. Can we see this? One more. I drove one hour. Oh my goodness, yes, of course. Yes. I drove one hour just to let you know that I am a journalist with Project Veritas. Oh, okay. And I would actually like to ask you about some commentary that oh, you said about us. Okay. Uh, right. you get video. I got to get video. Charlie Chester from CNN was exposed as pushing propaganda and bias. We were creating story there. We didn't know anything. Online. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Where is he? I, I noticed you didn't say anything about that, but you said something. He's back there. He's just standing there. <laughs> Us online. Thank you so much. Thank you Do so you much. even live in the Bronx in the neighborhood you claim you're from? I think she lived here for a long time, so I don't know. That's what I had heard, but we haven't seen her. Yeah. Nobody saw her, yeah. no. Yeah. Everyone in the community never, never seen her. We investigated that. Turns out there he is, our good friend, friend of the stream. He brought her, he brought him there. He did it. Turns out actually to be perhaps misleading. Thank oh, you. he's, he's ran up. He's like, I'm about to tell this guy off. He's like, uh, he's kind of tall. He's kind of black, a little scary. Ugh. He like, he goes in and he gets deflected by the minority shielding. He's like, oh, I don't know. It's not a good idea. He's perhaps like, misleading. Uh, Thank you so much. Uh, wait, hold on. Sorry, when, a, oh. when an elected representative <laughs> hides he's in the back there, he's like, and refuses to actually I'm going to, I'm going to do something about this. He's powering up. I'm gonna do something about this guy, okay? I'm not gonna let him hurt my queen. And be accountable. You know, I'm gonna. This is uh, this is the only reason I'm gonna, we have. Project Veritas, we expose. I'm gonna do here. something. <laughs> Maybe they just edited out the part where he stood up for. Her. Okay, sorry. Back to this. The other scene is not FDA approved. All right, hold on. Give me a second. I need to put another video on because I don't want to miss the. I don't want to miss this. <clears throat> Staff and security swoop in as AOC flees when questioned. Project Veritas journalist, see if you see anything in this. 
I drove one hour just to let you know that I am a journalist with Project Veritas. Oh, okay. And I would actually like to ask you about some commentary that oh, you said yeah. about us. Oh, yeah. Charlie Chester from CNN was exposed as pushing no. propaganda and bias. We were creating a story there that we didn't know anything about. So I think that's propaganda. I, you said something about us online. Neighborhood. But we haven't. Oh, yeah. We investigated that. Okay, here it goes. Hold on, guys. He's going to tell you what. Okay. He's going to tell you what really happened. Even Hassan roasted him for this. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. I just don't want to fucking wear a mask at the gym, dude. It's it's death, okay? Mask at the gym, worst thing that's ever happened to mankind. And we shifted to a reality where chatters don't blame me for Project Veritas. It was a funny story and they botched it. I didn't introduce... Can we shift into a reality where chatters don't blame me for Project Veritas? This is Mike from PR right here. It was a funny story and they botched it. I didn't introduce them to AOC fucking chat. Introduce them to AOC fucking chat? Nope, don't believe it. We shifted into that reality already. Mike from PA, I can't believe you fucking introduced AOC to the Project Veritas guy. I love that video, dude. Mike from PA in the background going... <laughs> oh, it's so funny. It's such a beautiful video. Oh, no. People are saying Mike from PV. Can we shift to when Fortnite was good? No. <laughs> anyway. Would you have fallen for this guy? Tell me if I was... Tell me that I'm dumb for falling for this guy. I help this guy. I fell for this fucking guy. Black Lives Matter shirt. And he was like, oh, uh, I didn't even get a chance to talk to AOC. All Relevant was at the DNC. I didn't realize All Relevant was at the DNC in 96. Oh, there he is. I found him. Didn't expect you to make racist jokes. What? I was calling him a nerd. Get the f*** get out of here, dude. Come on. Calling him a f***ing nerd. <laughs> I was calling him an Urkel. What's wrong? Uh, are you saying that if... if you could call me an Urkel if you want. Jesus Christ. You woke scolds really are the worst. I, I, I was using the real N-word, the nerd. The nerd. By the way, nerd is the only N-word I'm ever going to need, folks. Hello. I'm sorry, God. Mike is just like an infinite trove of fucking cringe shit. Hello, Listen. I love bacon. Such a good meme, bro. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I know. Lucy didn't learn anything. He didn't learn anything. Lucid. Funny, are you really tall or is Mike really short? Um, it's a little of both. So he is kind of a manlet, as you can see. But I'm five six and a half. He also, what's what's telling is he claims to be five nine in person. Stop. He claims to be five nine to people. On his license, it says he's five eight, and in person, he's just five seven. So like he's just constantly trying to like lie about his height. I'm padding my height. Yeah. How about Taco Bell black bean burrito? Vegan food? Do they have like yeah, but without cheese and stuff? Yeah. Oh my god! Jesus Christ! It's just never ending. What is this? Listen to this. So all these fucking dudes that were at the at this bar were intimidated by the bartender. Am I wrong, Amy? Do you remember this? No. Wait, they were, you don't, okay, Jesus Christ. All right, so there was this like bartender who was like LA. There, I went up to meet up with a bunch of people and uh, Mike was there and it was, was was Cake with us too? And I think Dan was with us and I think Dan pointed out, he's like, oh, where's Mike at? You know, the guy talks a lot of shit online and I'm just curious if he's here or whatever. Dan is like, look! And I turn around and Mike has already ran half a block down the street. <laughs> Dan's like, is that Mike? <laughs> And I'm like, I think it is. <laughs> and he like crawls and he's like gone. And I'm like, the whole group, we're all here. <clears throat> Cake, were you there? I think Cake was there too. We're all of us are like here, like standing here. The whole group is here. And he just, he just ran away. When was this? Oh, this is like two or three Twitch cons. I don't know, it was a while ago. Oh my God. Is that not a meme story? No, that's a real story. Cake was with us. He can confirm. Dan, I think Dan might've been with us too. <clears throat> 
Aaron might have been with us too. I don't remember who all was with us, but or that might have been 2019. It might have been Molina. It's not what some girl I was with. <laughs> They're all the same to me at this point. Just kidding. Don't make those jo jokes. I will ban you for ironic misogyny or unironic misogyny. Don't make them. I'm looking out for them right now. Don't make. We're not doing misogyny in here. We love women. Hey, if you're a woman and you're watching the stream right now, tell your women friends to watch the stream because we love and respect and cherish women on this stream. Okay, we do. Do not make anti-women jokes, ironically or unironically. We don't do that anymore, ever. When are you banning cooming to women just existing? There is now a soft ban in place in that. Don't do that either, it's weird. Unless they're specifically displaying themselves in a sexual context. Do not coom to them or make cooming things, okay? Five seven isn't so bad, right guys? Depends on how five seven you are. I'm five eight. I'm really five eight though. I'm a strong five eight. I, you know how I know I'm a strong five eight? Because I'm taller than every five nine and five ten guy I've ever met. Okay, so it depends on what kind of five seven guy you are. All right, there's a lot of uh, a lot of inflation going on, a lot of conversion problems going on with male height. I've noticed uh, when I meet a lot of people, a lot of five ten and five nine guys that are suspiciously my height or shorter. I don't know why or how that happens, but. <clears throat> be careful hot you know and they were so intimidated like i wanted to get more french fries or some shit or more ketchup and they were like no dude oh you do and they were all like intimidated by the bar and i was like what the fuck is wrong with you is he trying to make it have i watched this before is he trying to make it sound like he went up and he ordered from a scary bartender <laughs> what <laughs> and i just like walked up i think we watched this a long it time was, ago it was very twitch dude uh, uh, moment. I was like, what the fuck is wrong with these people? I definitely it's don't remember a... that. <laughs> uh, well, you don't remember. Okay, it's fine. It's just, it's just something I noticed from the other dudes, and I was like, what's wrong with these guys? Um, he's so alpha. Does anybody have a thing where he said he went to like all three military schools and was like boxing and playing hockey like almost professionally? Does anybody? Have... I'm sorry, dude. We've got. Well, LA Hot is pretty hot, so let's be honest here. Yeah. Oh, it was she, an attractive she bartender. Reminded, I think she looked like Scarlett Johansson. Remember to hit that like and subscribe, and don't forget the notification. And a quick word for the BBC. Remember when he said that everyone has run from the cops at some point? Oh yeah, true. The BBC, I'm Irish. Come up to black and tans, come out and fight me like a man. Show your white value on medals down in Flanders. Show her how the IRA made you run like hell away from the green and lovely lanes of killer. Oh my god! Do you remember? Okay, this is the last mic meme. This is for real the last mic meme, and then we're done. Do you remember when, um, do you remember when Hassan was taking part of that hashtag day off Twitch? <laughs> and Mike decided to stream that day for like 12 hours? <laughs> he was an actual scab. He actually scabbed so hard. And the thing that made it so funny was, um, was that Mike got in huge trouble. He got banned from Twitch for a day because he actually leaked his own, there was a scab list of airline pilots. Back in December 2020, Mike, oh wait, oh, this is the whole thread. Oh my God, I was such a good tweeter. Hold on, I think I documented all of this. Back in December of 2020, Mike from PA was banned by Twitch for posting about and celebrating a docs list of scabs in the airline industry. I blurred the names out, he did not. He's describing scabbing in the past as a grave moral wrong. If you didn't know, Mike's entire stream is built around the concept of being Hassan's waiting room. If you check his stats on Selino, you can see that he constantly times his stream and baits with his title to get Hassan viewers. Then he goes offline once Hassan goes live. This is how he streams. Oh, you can see here, um, it's a comparison of when his stream goes offline versus when Hassan's comes online. Hold on. I don't know if I'll wait for these pictures. Fuck, I can't. But you can tell on here, you can see that like he goes live, he gets some viewers, and then as soon as Hassan goes live, he cuts his stream. So you can see here, he goes live, he's picking up viewers, and then Hassan goes live, he cuts his stream. Well, what did, do, what did Mike do when Hassan wasn't going to stream during the day off? He decides to not only stream, but stream even longer than usual, trying to capitalize on all of Hassan's viewers that aren't able to watch him. This is literally the pinnacle of scabbish behavior. Fuck, this takes so long to load. 
Oh, this is the 3rd of September last year. It is almost our anniversary. What's a scab? A scab is somebody that works during when other workers are on strike, basically. So if you're trying to be on strike and then other people are working, they're fucking your strike up. Oh, so here you go. So you can see that like, normally he's streaming for, it's hard to tell. He'll normally cut a stream off like towards the middle of the day here, I guess. Like about in the center. <clears throat> but you can see that on the day that Hassan takes off, if we go to the center of the day, he streams way, 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 way after. Like generally he's stopping basically right towards, right after the halfway mark of the day. But over here he goes all night long, baby. Until what is that, nine or 10 o'clock? Just another data point. It's funny because he started later than normal and it's one of the only times he streamed longer than four to five hours. He's literally soaking up all the extra viewership while Hassan is not streaming an actual scab. Mike gets called out for the stream by Andre Dum Demise or whatever, and then either feigns ignorance or implies that the strike doesn't matter because it's not with an organization. Why are you streaming? Is there a reason I shouldn't be? Day, hashtag day off Twitch. What organization is that? What did Mike say on stream when called out? He said it wasn't a real strike and made fun of people for taking their first steps towards collective action. When asked again about his longer than normal stream, he lies and says he streamed along with pretty much everyone else. Then he claims that he didn't strike because it wasn't an actual economic action. The funny thing is though, is that when Mike was pushed to do actual economic action before, he pushed back and claimed that supporting things like mutual aid would kill his channel. Even his chat plus other broadcaster, Lucid Fox, thought his position was indefensible. Who's got the link to that clip? It's also strange because he's called out other leftist creators that did fundraising and charity as not doing real charity and just called them all self-aggrandizing fests and virtue signal events. Mike from PA is a pathetic spineless fuck who doesn't care about any of the issues he speaks about and only does what he can to leech clout from others without making even the slightest personal sacrifice to further support any of his beliefs. In other words, a grifter. True. Absolutely true. Good Twitter recap. Wait, where's the Lucid Fox clip? Give me that one. That'll be our last one. Involved in the process. Seems like that might be more fruitful than having another one of these uh, discussions that does nothing. Okay. The reason why people organize around presidential elections is because they get uh -huh. tens of billions of dollars of free media. It's a Social unifying media. it's a unifying yes. arg it's a unifying election that everybody in the entire country knows about and it gives us a common language that we can reach more and more people. If you go into mutual aid stuff, that I is inherently close, yeah. a very local mm -hmm. action. If I go yes. and do a mutual aid Correct. shit, yes. my audience will go from thousands of people to 50 people. <laughs> what? Because they're going to all be in their own communities doing local actions and not doing anything that's oriented towards national politics. I love the mask off moment. It's so fucking funny. What? This is a defeating. And also, can we be, be, be Why would I want everybody off in their local communities working on shit? And also, can we be real? Be real? Who's going to turn? Can you show me the mutual what? aid streamers of people that just sit there discussing mutual aid all day? What are you talking about? You can do You can diversify your content. You can talk about more than just that. What? Okay, guys. I, I, I mean, <laughs> if it's just. <laughs> oh, and I need that boom sound effect. Who's working on that? I need to put it on my soundboard. Desperately. I desperately need Destiny, that boom sound if you're effect. Ever reading anything by Keffels, please <laughs> read it out in her robotic monotone voice. Okay. Back to this video. Exactly the same as the one he made about Sophie. It's also absolutely ridiculous that he rambles on about Kira just being close to people for clout as well, because he is absolutely close to Vosh and Destiny for clout too. Like, come on, man. This is all projection and we can see it a mile off. I also want to make a big point here that Kira's harassment has been so intense that she has lost a lot of her viewers on Twitch and YouTube. Despite the constant barrage of her- That's not why she's lost viewers. He's such a liar. What a weasley little liar. Wait, hold on. I just want to suppose. What a weasley little liar, dude. Somebody tell him he's still lying. 
harassment that she gets doing her job on a daily, no, hourly basis. She has been steadfast in her left-wing opinions and she is always doing her best to unlearn the harmful behaviors that she had in the past. And she does all this despite the drop in clout that she is supposedly farming from having pretend opinions on the internet. I mean, come on people, you can clearly see that this is absurd and has no basis in reality. It is simply the systematic destruction of a woman on the internet simply because she chose to be outspoken and make political content. Cringe. Seriously, if you're watching this and you have any empathy or sympathy for Kira's position at all, please go and show her some love. You won't regret it. She is more than worthy of your time. So there's a little rule of three that I'm trying to bring into my content here, and I'm going to try and stick to that going forward. So I'm going to finish this video with a third and final, and perhaps one of the worst character assassinations that Xander Hall has done on his channel. Uh oh. And that is of his ex, Lani. <gasps> oh no. Not Lani. Oh boy, this is a lot. Strap in everybody. Lani, AKA Pastel Leftist, was Xander Hall's partner for two and a half years, according to the twit longer she posted about him in July of this year. She describes how one day, a few weeks before the time of the twit longer, he dumped her via text for apparently lying, stealing, and cheating on him, which is already extremely shitty behavior. Lani says all of this- Wait, what? <laughs> Bro, the bias. What do you mean? Is it is it really that horrible to dump somebody via text, depending on what's happened? Come on. This is completely untrue and has no idea where he got all this stuff from, but thinks it might be because a car was broken into one time and all that the people who stole stuff left was his debit card, which he already had permission to use to buy groceries and stuff like that. Lani also goes on to say that Xander Hall has refused to talk to him about any of this and claims that she was a master manipulator, also implying that she sold all the stuff that was stolen from her car for drugs. He demanded that she come home from work and pack all of her stuff, including her 13-year-old cat, into her Ford Focus and leave immediately, which is of course an absurd thing to ask someone on such short notice. She had to move out and couch surf and sleep in her car for a few weeks before she could finally go home when she realized her room had been trashed and Xander Hall had left with her cat to go and live back at his mum's house. So she moved back into their old apartment and was obviously trying to deal with this sudden shakeup in her life, her happiness, her security, when Xander the man shows up without her cat and told her he was ending the tenancy on the apartment and she needed to move out and be gone the next day. Lani unfortunately was arrested while she was trying to find somewhere to live as unfortunately she couldn't afford to pay the upkeep on the tags, which is vehicle registration for non-US viewers, on her car. And one of her friends had drugs on him when the cops pulled them up and she had to spend five days in a cell. When she made a phone call, she found out that Xander Hall and his mom had completely blocked her or were ignoring her calls. And when she got out of prison and someone managed to take her home, she found out that the locks had been changed and she had no way to get into the apartment. This meant that she was homeless and had none of her belongings. So let's recap real quick. A two and a half year relationship, the guy ends it out of nowhere via text, claiming that she's doing drugs and stealing from him, literally makes her homeless. And what does he have to say for himself? First things first, gang. I just want to say that making content about your breakup is an extremely ghoulish thing to do. Okay, like making a tweet, going off on a Facebook post or even an Instagram story is kind of a normal human thing to do. But a 50 minute YouTube video, not just a 50 minute YouTube video, a 50 minute YouTube video where he is trying to say that he made her homeless for a good reason and that she had tried to frame him and that he was trying to debunk some kind of conspiracy against him. So my policy on this is like, once things are public, they're public and you kind of have to deal with it publicly. Um, it sucks to like be public about like breakups and shit like that. Like I agree, that's annoying. But like if it's already ultra public, you kind of have to like address it publicly. It, it, by that point, it's like, this is why I've said this before. I get a little bit irritated when streamers are like, oh, like you guys are so parasocial, blah, blah, blah. It's like, well, hold on. Well, if you've like built this whole relationship out in like a parasocial way, such that like people are watching your stream and shit all the time, of course people are gonna be invested in the outcomes of, of what's going on. Like that's just, you've built it into it. And the Lanny Xanderhal shit was obviously very public. So I think it's pretty reasonable that it's gonna be addressed in a public manner. This man 
is insufferable. One thing I've learned from my time as a leftist and doing actual activism out in the real world is it does not matter how much of a piece of shit someone can be. They deserve, at the very least, the basic human rights that every human being deserves. Food, clothing, housing, healthcare. Xander Hall reaching so far into the depths of his cruelty to render his partner homeless is just something that is so sickening to me from so many different angles. It was genuinely hard for me to go through this video just seeing how smug and comfortable he is all the while safe in the knowledge that he is going to be fine and his ex-partner is going through one of the worst times of her life. He starts off in this video by saying that early in the relationship, when he moved in with her, they had a trad con relationship. Now, for those of you that don't know what this is, this means that this is where the man does all the money making and the woman does all the chores around the house, the cooking, the cleaning, something that's known as reproductive labor because it's normally women in society that have done this thanks to the patriarchy. This is just like a kind of gross dynamic where he has all the power to begin with. But I Wait, hold on. It sounds like they agreed to it, though. That's It's okay if you agree to it. I've never heard that term of a reproductive labor, but okay. But Jesus, whatever, okay. I gotta say, if a couple consents to this and it's something that they're both happy with, oh. then that's absolutely fine. Like, okay. If you have a trad con relationship like this, well, at least you both so. safe in the knowledge that you are fine with it and you do not feel oppressed by this, Cool, go for it, go for your life. Who am I to say what's right and wrong in a person's relationship? If that works for you, cool. But it does not sound like Xander Hall had a very good knowledge of boundaries and consent when it came to this kind of relationship. He says one of the first things that he noticed when he moved out is that he wasn't seeing as much money coming in as he thought he should be, which is like, a very normal thing to happen when you first move out of your parents' gaff and go to live on your own somewhere, or even with a couple. This is called the material conditions of the working class. No, this was called that he felt like he was missing money, and when he went and he looked, he said there was money being disappeared from his account because it looked like she was stealing from it. Why is he misrepresenting this so much? Why does Melina have me so loud, Mel? under capitalism Xander Hall, and I advise you to do some research on it. Of course, it's an incredibly upsetting reality check that someone like Lani understood a lot more than Xander Hall because she has more life experience than him being an older person than him. So of course- I also like how I'm gonna make an accusation here that's totally baseless, and I'm gonna admit that it's totally baseless, but I'm willing to bet that if we reverse the roles here, that, how old is Xander Hall, by the way? Because that Lani girl is like 32 years old or something, right? There's, I think it's a 10 year age gap between the two. I wonder if that age gap was reversed. If this guy'd be saying like, a little bit sus that he's dating somebody so young. I, I really wonder, you know, but. He's 23, gotcha. So when she explains that to him, that makes a lot of sense as to why she'd say that. But no, of course, Xander Hall is implying here that she is covering up for something, that this is all part of the conspiracy against him. Xander Hall then says that Lani was not giving him the emotional support that he needed, but from the account that Lani gives about their relationship, it really doesn't seem like he was open in his communication about this stuff. It's actually really sad to read this, but here it is. I'll admit that since I started working outside the house, I haven't been as good of a girlfriend to Alex as I've been in the two years prior. During the two years of COVID, I was home all the time, constantly available and on call to help with anything he needed. I was mostly happy, but I told him many times about how I felt lonely a lot of the time. Alex is a lot better at talking about himself than he is at listening, and most days he would hardly come out of his room. When I started working again and I made some friends, I stopped being home as often, which made me happier but him miserable. I should have tried harder to find a healthy balance we could both feel good about, but I don't feel like I deserve to have my cat and everything I own taken from me. So it kind of sounds like they came across a very normal problem that happens in relationships that's basically down to toxic masculinity preventing men from asking- <laughs> Bro, you're reading so hard! You don't know if that was the reason why. There could be a million reasons why communication is breaking down. It's such a stretch. It's such a reach. And it's inappropriate because you don't actually know. You have no fucking idea. Why would you even try to like guess into this? Like that's a little bit gross.
for their needs directly. This guy's like a buzzword what is machine. A little bit more True. Sickening in this situation though is that he says the only reason that he moved in with Lani was to escape a living situation with his parents. My living situation with my parents eventually just got too toxic for me to continue being happy and making content. And I decided that my best course of action was to move away. And so I did. I moved all the way across the country to Palm Springs, California with Lani. Which is, and I will die on this hill, a fucking terrible reason to move in with someone. It's a great reason to move out on your own, absolutely, but you should not be moving in with someone else just because of that. When That's true, but I mean, it sounded like they were dating, right? Like, what's, like... If they were dating, it's pretty natural that they would move in together. He's not going to move out while she lives someplace and he lives someplace. Like... When you move in with someone that you love, that you're in a romantic or sexual relationship with, you do it because you love them and you care for them and you decide to face this life together. Not to escape another shitty living situation. Which, in all honesty, doesn't actually sound like that bad of a situation because his parents took him in straight away after things went wrong with Lani. He also goes on then to say that Lani needed attention, which is like, dude, do you know what relationships are? In fact, even five minutes ago, you said that you needed attention from Lani and that she wasn't giving it to you. And apparently that's a valid thing for you to complain about, but not for her. He also does this bizarre mental backflip here saying that Lani would want attention, despite the fact that both of us were at home all day and we spent tons of time together just by virtue of that. <laughs> That's not a good thing to say. <laughs> like, no, dude, just because you're in the same house as someone or even in the same room doesn't mean that you're doing bonding activities or paying attention to your partner. That is like the laziest relationship I've ever heard of in my entire life. And from what Lani said in a twit longer that we just read out, it kind of sounds like you were just in your room a lot of the time, just doing your own fucking thing. This next part is just absolutely batshit. Like I really got to hand it to Xander Holt of all the things that he does wrong that I've talked about in this video. This really takes the cake. Uh -oh. While my suspicions became ever increasing, Lonnie was offered a job cleaning Airbnbs by a friend of hers. She took it claiming she wanted to be able to get out of the house and make some friends and help make ends meet financially. Lonnie was now spending most of her time out of the house. In some cases, she would go more than a day without responding to me, and eventually it started not coming home. When I'd questioned her about it and she'd actually respond, her reasoning was that she was spending the night on her friend Sarah's couch because they worked together and they were carpooling to save money on gas. I didn't buy it, and the first night that she didn't come home, I started to consider the relationship over. Like, to consider the relationship over the second that your partner does something that you don't like is so, so weak, dude. Like, you utter, utter waste, man. I couldn't think of a situation that is more childish, ridiculous, and self-serving than a man not even attempting to fix his relationship. Depending on the type of relationship you're in or what's going on, a partner spending the night away from home, if it's not pre-agreed upon, I could totally see that being like a, a, a literally just an instantaneous relationship ender for some people. Like depending on, now it's gonna depend a lot on your circumstances and like who's doing what and like what the expectations are, but like a partner just disappearing for the night, that's a pretty big, that's like a pretty big deal to some people. Um, I would be wary of stuff like that. Um, there's a reason why, especially if it's not communicated beforehand. Um, I, I don't know if the rest of the world is like this, but in every job I worked, um, if you no call, no showed, if you were at a really nice place, you'd get to do that one time. Otherwise, but for a lot of places, you would just instantly be fired. If you no call, no showed to a job, you were gone instantly. You just, that's it. Um, yeah, I don't know. That's not, that doesn't seem that wild to me, but. When his partner is trying to make herself happy on her own. Everything he talks about next where he says that she wasn't answering is frankly ridiculous text demanding to know where she is. That's not a ridiculous text, my dude. To ask where your partner is when they don't show up after work? That's not a ridiculous text at all. I would expect most people, like... I would expect most people to be wondering where the fuck their partner is. He mentions that Lani shuts him down, saying that he's being controlling. And like, yeah, dude, that's because you were being controlling. Demanding to know where your partner is all the time, that's a- <laughs> Oh, man. Oh, this guy is just real fucking stupid. 
There's nothing wrong with asking where your partner is, or even demanding to know. I think you probably have a right to know if it's your partner where they are. Like, what do you mean? Like, extremely controlling behavior. That's not Again, extremely controlling. Why are you not doing any self-reflection here, dude? Being completely overbearing in how you smother a partner is absolutely absurd. And you really need to consider that other people need space. Throwing all your toys out with the pram and making her homeless because you simply cannot be bothered to try and make the relationship work is, well, the whole man belongs in the bin. He also complains that Lani took the keys with her every time that she went out and that meant that he couldn't go out and do stuff. And it just makes me think, dude, are you an actual amoeba? Just get some more keys cut. Speak to the property manager. Like, what, what, what do you fucking want, dude? I think that- Are you allowed to do that? I feel like in, I'm, I'm being on, I don't know. But I feel like in most of the places I've been at, you're not allowed to make duplicate keys for apartments. Um. I, I, at least I've never seen that before, but you could maybe ask for another set of keys, but now it depends on if your partner is on the lease or not, probably, right? In listening to all this and understanding what's happened here, I've come to the conclusion that Xanderhal made a huge mistake that a lot of people do when they look for a relationship, and that is that he wasn't looking for a partner, he was looking for a mother. This kind of makes sense when Xanderhal talks about the stresses that he had living with his mom. Wait, <laughs> bro! This is actually some cringe wild shit. This guy's like actually a piece of shit. He's like, he's like, it's like the other, it's like the opposite of like the toxic masculinity person. This is like the toxic femininity shit where he's like just making these insane stretches, these insane reaches, these huge judgments. And he just has, he really has no fucking idea. He just doesn't know. I can actually relate to it a lot. And I did used to exhibit a lot of the same harmful behaviors that he did in like overbearing, needing to know where your partner is all the time, thinking that they're like lying and cheating on you and stuff like that. But my dude, that is a trauma response. And to be fair to myself, I never fucking made anyone homeless. I I, just to be clear, me and Melina, who are in an open relationship, we can't do that. We wouldn't do that. If I went to sleep and Melina didn't show up some night, I would think that something is really wrong. And I'm pretty sure she would think the same thing. We're literally open. I, like, the idea that he thinks that that's controlling to know where the fuck your partner is, that's, it's just such a, it's such a wild, insane fucking thing to think. How, like, how... I don't think in any household, or if your parents, if you left home and you didn't say anything, your parents would wonder where you were. If you lived with a partner, they'd wonder where you were. If you, Th that's such a, it's such a bizarro thing for this guy to say. Ever made a fucking 50 minute rant video on why doing that was a good thing to do. And this next bit just, ew. She would constantly use my card to order Grubhub and Uber Eats to places she was cleaning for lunch instead of packing some of the fresh food that she had bought that was in our fridge and going bad. She would also constantly leave half-eaten food just sitting on the counter to go bad. She wouldn't even bother just throwing it in the fridge to let it be good for later. I can't stand people who call themselves leftists and do not understand that people do not want to do reproductive labor. <laughs> Dude. <laughs> this is some brain rot shit. At, like, this guy's brain is rotted. He's learned so many buzzwords. That I always say this, and I'm going to keep saying this, and I encourage you guys to do this. Um, I did this a few times when I was debating Richard about the... Um, how am I running out of energy all the time? Um, about the Nazi shit. I think every now and then it's good to take a step back and like have like a macro analysis of like what the fuck is going on right now in my life in this argument in this debate and what I'm standing for what I think of it's always gonna take a step back and, and look am I losing the plot I, like I'll do this in the middle of debate sometimes where I try to refocus or ask what are we arguing about or whatever it seems like it's I'm being passive aggressive I'm not being passive aggressive I'm just genuinely trying to figure out what's going on I think this guy probably needs to step back and do that like when you get to the point to where you're arguing that like well I can't pack food even though it would save me money because that's reproductive labor, which is a vestige of the patriarch, which is actually an oppressive structure that capitalism reinforces us with and makes it so that I can only order grub. Like, you, at some point, you got to say, like, okay, hold on. What the fuck are you talking about? What is wrong with you, okay? You can pack a fucking lunch, all right? You, you don't need to write a 32-page essay on why packing lunches is, like, oppression, all right? Like, take a step back, take a deep breath, and... Figure out what the fuck is going on. Holy shit. Like, you're not door dashing because capitalism makes you, my dude.
Like, cooking is a whole ass thing, dude. Lots of people get Uber Eats. I'm going to be getting an Uber Eats after I've recorded this video. Because, believe I'm it or not, and I know this is hard for some of you, shouldn't be hard for him, because he looks like he's around my age. Poor people lived way before Uber Eats. Poor people lived way before DoorDash. We, we actually did. We were able to do it. <laughs> we lived off McDonald's, $1.99 double cheeseburgers, okay? Or the Taco Bell menu, okay? We had ways to survive. I can't think of a single poor person. I don't know because I, w I wasn't poor when Grubhub existed, but I can't imagine ordering Grubhub if you're poor. Like, that's like 10 fucking meals, unironically. One Grubhub order is gonna be 10 fucking meals if you leave a tip. Because you can get like shitty fast food meals. Well, back in the day you could, I don't know now, but before you could get it for like four to five bucks. No, back then you'd get it for two or three dollars. Two double cheeseburgers, you'd ask for a cup for water, you'd get some Sprite and you'd walk the fuck out. Two bucks, I think it was a six or 700 calorie meal, I think, each double cheeseburger was like three to 350 or 360 calories or whatever, and then you'd be gone. Grubhub and DoorDash is like 20 or 30 bucks a pop, dude. It's so much more expensive. It's so much more expensive. Got no energy to cook. And bear in mind, Lani, again, as he admits, was the entire trad wife ideal. So she was doing all the reproductive labor, she was going out doing a job, and she was trying to socialize. He complains that all the food in the fridge would go back. Reproductive labor is not that hard. It's just often unappreciated. And it can leave the woman fucked in the case of a divorce where she now has no marketable skills. But it's not like it's impossibly difficult. They have no kids. They don't have fucking children. Keeping the house clean is not that difficult when it's just two adults. Even if it's with a dirty adult. If that's your full-time job, it's not that hard. Bad. And I'm not being funny, man, but like, Sanderhal, have you never been in control of a fridge in your entire life? It happens all the time, because unfortunately capitalism doesn't allow us a lot of time to actually address things like that. Plus, if you've got ADHD like me, planning and cooking is such a drama. When I'm hearing this, I can't help but go back to this clip that I played you earlier. And buy some fucking pizza Lunchables then, at least. You can buy pre-made food. I buy pre-made fucking food. You, there's other solutions than grubhubbing or Uber Eatsing or door dashing. That shit is so expensive. And, Absolutely. and Lonnie says, Go to the bathroom. Why can't you ever throw up in the toilet? Like, this is a thing that happens regularly, and this poor woman has to deal with this literal oh baby my man. God. Pop him whiteies on stream because he smoked too much weed, and he just can't make it to the bathroom. That is pretty cringe of Xander Hall. But... So Xander Hall is then talking about how he blocked off all of his PayPal accounts, all the access he knew that Lani had to his money, and then goes on to show a bunch of cash app transactions made to her account. But hang on a minute, if he just like on a whim decided to like stop her from getting money, which was her only access to money by the way, especially considering that he thinks that she was lying about the job that she had. And of course, remember chat, her having access to his money was an agreement that they previously had in the relationship, whether it was unspoken or not. What did Xanderhal expect Lani to do when he stopped her from having any access to money whatsoever? No, there was no chance for Lani to plead her case. No chance for her to talk it out with him. No, Xanderhal exacted the same state violence that any <laughs> sheriff or landlord would do on someone who has not been paying their bills on time. It appears that the same day he did all this and stopped her from having access to money was also the same day that he kicked her out of the apartment. He didn't confront her with the information that he now had, nor did he give her any kind of grace period to find somewhere else to live. He just acted like the most disgusting, entitled, wannabe land baron that you could possibly conceive. Also, this part in the video where he scrolls through the transactions of varying amounts that absolutely can be explained away mostly by the fact that, as he admits earlier in the video, he was the sole breadwinner and gave her free reign of his debit card with this absurd epic music like he's just solved the mystery of the century as well it's gross there's no other way to put it it's sick he's a sick misogynist that treats <laughs> women like shit on and offline now i just want to stress that while this is a really difficult part of the video to go through i did want to add a little bit of comic relief in here for people because what kind of a content creator would i be without anything like that so um here you go I didn't hear from him at all except when he would text me to complain about how awful his mom's house is and how she won't let him go anywhere and how he's miserable because she won't get him any vapes or weed cartridges. He would only text her about that shit 
He is an actual winner. And to be honest, that is on brand considering a lot of the stuff that we've already gone through. Here's my number one rule why I don't shit talk my partners. Here's some life advice for you because people know this, even if they can't put it into words and even if they don't have a way to like say it and even if they're not aware of it, okay? People know this intuitively. I don't shit talk my partners because it reflects badly on me. If I'm out here saying, oh, this person I dated was a fucking loser. Oh, this person I said, blah, 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 blah. Okay, well, why the fuck are you dating them then? It sounds like the only fucking loser here is you because they are a loser and you're choosing to be with one. What's worse, right? So if you want to make fun of Xander Hall for all of these things, sure, that's fine. Make fun of him. Go for it. But Xander Hall's 23 years old. This Lanny chick is in her 30s. Who's the loser? Because she should have the wherewithal at this point, like... To figure out, you know, hey, well, maybe this guy's not at the maturity level that I should be with. Also, again, shoe on the other foot. If this was a guy complaining about his 20-year-old girlfriend crying about not getting vape cartridges and shit, he'd probably be calling. I know he would at this point. Now I've heard enough to know this. This guy would 100% be calling that guy a creepy abuser who's trying to take advantage of um, young people. Garen fucking teed. This guy would be making that accusation. 100%. True. Anyway, let's dive back into this cesspit. When Zan talks about Emily, the friend that Lani had who fell out with her and apparently exposed her gambling and meth problem, I'm skeptical at best. This is a man who's shown his ass regarding how he makes things up about women who he doesn't like so often that you'd have to forgive me that I'm doubtful, even in the existence of this person. But let's do a debate bro classic and play devil's advocate. I'm sure all of them are here. Um, One hour and seven minutes. Into the video. Yep, they're all gonna love this shit. Let's say that this Emily person does exist and that Zan Hall's right about how Lani stole money off him and that she's got a gambling problem and she's addicted to meth. So? You see, what these leftists in Xander Hall's what? community who have, for example, demanded Lani do drug tests, harassed her, accused her of grooming him, even though the power balance is in Xander Hall's favor and every- it's She's 10 years older than him! She's 10 years older! No offense to Xander Hall, because I'm not gonna sit here and roast somebody about their paper. Xander Hall probably makes like 30 or 40,000 a year on YouTube shit. He's not some fucking, like, oil baron. Xander Hall's not pulling down six figures a month on YouTube. What are you talking about these power imbalances? The guy's a struggling streamer. Like the guy's tweeted out in the past that he's like, doesn't have money to make rent. Why do you keep talking about power imbalances here? Every single instance of the relationship and made her online life a living hell after this video is publishing don't understand. And again, this is the fault of Xander Hall and other debate nerds is the punitive justice, especially financial violence, AKA making someone homeless is not justice. You don't just become a cop when someone has issues like that. You know better than any fucking cop in the police forces of America or the justice system. Holy fucking shit, touch grass, the lot of you. I swear to God. Apparently this Emily also accuses Lani of getting her ex-boyfriend evicted by not paying the rent on time. This man calls himself a leftist, a leftist. As someone in a tenants union, I cannot stress enough. The only people who evict anybody in this world are either landlords and slash or the cops. The idea that this man thinks that it's a tenant's fault when they get evicted fucking boils my blood. How the hell can you call yourself oh any God, kind dude. of leftist when you've got an opinion like that? I'd love to hear what Bernie, who apparently Zan, really hoped would win in the DNC nominations, would have to say about that. Also, Zan then going on to say that when Lani said she got evicted because her ex was hitting her and abusing her and they were being so loud when they had fights that they got too many noise complaints, he of course says, well, uh, Emily said she made it up, so obviously she did. You fucking piece of shit. He goes on a lengthy diatribe now about credit scores Believe and his and dreams Hashtag. of being able to move to Seattle. And honestly, I just kind of fucking tuned out at this point. It was like 3 a.m. when I was doing this bit in the script. And after everything that he has done to his ex, I honestly do not care, dude. Like this guy is so focused on like not getting an eviction because it would harm his credit score. I'm just like, bro, you made someone homeless. You made someone homeless and removed access to their money so that they got arrested because they couldn't afford the upkeep on their registration and now they have a criminal record. What the fuck do you think that does to someone's credit score? What do you think that that does to someone's life? 
Anyway, next, Xander Hall just like admits that Lani told him that she has nowhere to go. And he's just like, I don't care. And then he says this. She needed to move her stuff out. I don't wish homelessness on anyone, but it just had to happen. 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 All for your fucking credit scores, Anne? All because you didn't have the guts to sort out your relationship? Weak, dude. Fucking weak. One of the weirdest things to me that doesn't really add up is that Xander Hall claims that there were eviction notices served to the property that apparently Lani had hid. Like, what would that have achieved? Please get this guy. He won't talk to me. This guy already said, he already tweeted out as I was watching this. He's like, oh, I'm not going to talk to this guy. He's he, he would never. This dude is a fucking clown. Also, why would she not have mentioned in a twit longer that she would have been worried about getting evicted from the apartment by landlords? When it came down to it, she was evicted eventually anyway. Now, in a twit longer, she claims that Alex and his mom changed the locks to the apartment so that she couldn't get in when she got out of jail. But honestly, knowing landlords as well as I know them now with the work I've done for the tenants union, it's possible that a landlord would have just done that. Possibly because Xander Holt ended the tenancy and kind of like forced all of her stuff to get locked up. But anyway, it's by the by. And to be honest, I guess it's possible, but I don't know why she'd lie about this. And she doesn't exactly try and vilify Xander Hall in this twit longer. In fact, at the end of it, she actually pleads with him to get in contact with her to sort all this mess out. She even says at one point, to be clear, I'm not saying all or even most of this is Alex's fault. He isn't required to help me, but it feels like he is trying to make the hole I'm in impossible to dig my way out of. Also, what's he playing at when he shows this Instagram exchange? Does he think this makes him look like a good person? Of course, his fans don't care. They're gonna. Okay, hold on. When you ape hands tag me to click links that are stupid as fuck, Vine booms have. Stop. Don't do this. I don't care. I support him anyway, but damn, anyone on the outside looking in is gonna see this and be like, Yikes. Xander Hall shares some more DMs with people who were like legit concerned about Lonnie's whereabouts. He underlines this one where a third party who would be unbiased says that she was smoking DMT in the car with someone. Zan underlines this and writes doubt here, implying that he thinks that she was smoking meth. Again, let me point this out to everybody. If somebody is addicted to meth, especially if it's someone that you love, that still doesn't make everything that he's doing to her okay. He correctly points out in the video that meth and DMT need a pipe to be smoked in, a crack pipe in particular. And yeah, that's correct. But if you've ever actually been outside in your actual life, you would know that someone on crystal meth behaves extremely differently to someone who is on DMT. So I actually entirely believe that she was smoking DMT and not meth, to be honest. Not that it matters, right? Also clearly in reference to Alex telling- Just as a heads up, I'm just gonna say this. I don't trust anybody saying anything or talking about drugs or anything whatsoever. Just as a heads up. I wouldn't trust anybody to know if anybody's on meth or on DMT. Everybody in drug communities use all of these words interchangeably. Unless you have a friend that's a fucking drug addict, they've been in and out of rehab or some shit, trust that person. But fucking losers on the internet like this, they don't know anything about drugs, I wouldn't trust them to fucking know anything about any of these drugs. Just as a heads up. <clears throat> He's spoken to friends who've been worried about her whereabouts. She says in this screenshot, I spoke to blank and they said you never spoke to them. I'm confused, which is clearly at the very least an indicator that Xander Hall is not telling the full truth with these screenshots. Xander Hall then admits that he was considering going back to the apartment with the police. A leftist who's done content covering police brutality. He was going to bring the cops to his ex-girlfriend's place, probably telling them that she'd stolen from him, is addicted to crystal meth, and might be fucking crazy and unhinged. This motherfucker could have got her killed. <laughs> also in this next bit, Xander Hall just straight accuses Lani of setting up a credit card in his name, which is extremely fucking hard to do when you don't have a fixed address. Like, where is she picking up this credit card from, dude? You can order them online! What are you talking about?! Is she picking Bro, I had like, like five Chase credit cards and I lived in fucking Nebraska. We don't even have Chase banks over there. I don't even think I've actually ever even stepped. I've actually used Chase cards for the better part of the last five years. Hundreds of thousands of rewards points. I booked my flights. Order. I don't think I've ever been inside a Chase bank in my entire life. Ever. They're blue. That's all I know. I've never been in a Chase bank in my life. Like the car park where she's sleeping in her car. One of the first things that he says in this video is that he noticed that money was getting drained out of his PayPal account to an unknown source and that he didn't believe Lani when she said that he might have got hacked. But I've had my PayPal hacked before. A literal Russian child hacked my fucking PayPal in 2014 because I didn't know what I was doing. The little shit used it to pay for gaming subscriptions. It was extremely funny. And in fact, when I contacted PayPal, they sorted it all out immediately. It was pretty fucking good, to be honest. But what I'm trying to point out with this anecdote 
like, though, is that actually it's entirely possible that someone could have stolen Xander Hall's identity and taken out a credit card in his name, not just Lani. Next is more unfounded <laughs> accusations that she was done by the cops for meth. And I gotta say, sharing someone's police report, even though it is public information, as he rightly points out in the video, it's just a weird fucking thing to do. It's like being like, here, here is the official thing that says that my ex is a bad person. Anyway, he says that in the police report that she was definitely done for methamphetamine. Now, look at these police reports. It doesn't say anywhere here that she was done for meth. It says that she was done for being in possession of a controlled substance. You do know what a controlled substance is, don't you, Xanderhal? Many, 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 many things. But no, Zan the man needs you to think that it is meth. You know, the bad drug that all the crazy unhinged druggies do. All the crazy unhinged druggies that steal things and hurt people and rob people and rape people. Just so they can get their fix. And making out that Lani is a person like that would fit his narrative pretty conveniently, wouldn't you say? Xanderhal then tells us that he went back to the apartment while she was in jail, and is delighted to tell us that it looked like the aftermath of a frat house party. I'm pretty fucking sure that Xanderhal- She literally admitted to the meth thing, I thought, but okay. Paul didn't go to college, so I don't know how he knows what an actual frat house party is, but anyway, that's by the by. And to be honest, if I'd have gone through the shit that Lani had gone through, I would not have an incentive to clean up that house. I would be fucking devastated. I'd probably spend a lot of time just like in bed. Hell, I find it hard enough to clean my house in general with fucking ADHD. And trust me, having ADHD and OCD is a fucking trip. Oh my God. So next he says that he- Wait, real quick. If I do power armor and a thruster sh suit, does the power armor have life support in it? Or does only the thruster suit have life support in it? Do I need to put a life support thing in the power armor or what? Okay. Found like some beakers and jars that were in shrink wrap. Kind of implying that he thinks that she was going to be synthesizing drugs in the apartment. But probably what was more likely is that she was going to use it for like Etsy store stuff that I think she was doing on the side because it kind of looks like she was doing that stuff anyway, according to this Twitter post. But honestly, at this point, it really does sound like he's trying to LARP his own Breaking Bad made up fantasy. He even references the show when he's talking about this. And what I want to point out, by the way, is that Xander Hall and his community seem like obsessed with evidence, even if it is like obsessed with evidence. <laughs> so why do we not have what? a picture, Xander Hall? Where are the pictures of this supposed meth lab that Lani was making in your fucking ex apartment? Like if this happened to me and I went to an old apartment and found some stuff that I didn't recognize in there and I was worried. Wait, that you can't use power armor two in space. Is that true? it was like weird i would probably take a picture of it so i could ask people and be like yo uh what the fuck is this he then next talks about how he starts removing all of his possessions clearly trying to make a statement here that Ugh. even though they had the agreement that lani was able to spend his money on the things that she needed that now all of these things are his actually oh no oh you thought that actually i was being nice and these things belong to you no they're mine they're fucking mine and the way he then talks about how he just went back to his normal life, pretending that none of this stuff happened, is just so disgusting. Where is his empathy? My God, no debrief, no makeup sex, just sweep it all under the carpet. Don't even think about your poor, homeless ex-girlfriend who has no fucking money, has gone to jail, and whose life is falling apart. Just go and fucking make your YouTube videos. Complete refusal to take responsibility of his actions. He tries to cover his tracks here by saying that if she really wanted to, Lani could get in touch with my mum. But even if that's the case, it is so irresponsible to cut off all communication with someone that you had been seeing for two years, to not even allow her to make her case. Honestly, gang, I can't get over this. Like, I've had toxic relationships that were six months long where someone had been confirmed by multiple people to have been cheating on me, and I still didn't act like this. I still tried to sort things out with this person. I gave them way more grace than this fucking man could even conceive. This next bit, I'm just gonna let him speak for himself, really. Okay. I have no intent to keep on paying Paying to keep her items in storage. It's burning a hole in my pocket for me to even hold on to these things. I only saved them out of the kindness of my heart to try and be a good person, and it's only gotten me tangled up in more drama. I'd literally have less bullshit to deal with had I let her sentimental, irreplaceable items get trashed in the unit along with the rest of her stuff. No comment. Lots of notes, by the way, but no comment. 
I don't really think I need to cover any more of this video than what I've already mentioned, so I'll just leave you with this part. Zan references the twit longer that Lani made and says that he's proud of his fans for already being skeptical before he'd had the chance to make this video. With that in mind, it's time to wrap this up. The long and short of this stuff is that Xander Hall has fostered a community of liberal toxic masculinity. No one here is <laughs> listening to the victim. No, no one at all actually even understands that Lani is a victim. Nor do they understand that Sophie or Kara or the woke scolds that he talked about are also victims. They actually believe that Xander Hall is the victim in all of these situations, despite him having all the power in the situation with Lani and his fans being predispositioned to support him in the case of Sophie, Kara and the quote unquote woke scolds. In the situation with Lani, he is your traditionally toxically masculine, head of the household manly man. His community clearly have a sheer lack of understanding of material conditions, human rights, drug use, state violence, and financial violence. Not to mention homelessness, which is a clear indication that he doesn't educate his community on those things. And the fact that he called his video on his breakup, debunking the allegations against me, sort of implies that there's a conspiracy against him. This is a narrative that he falls back on a lot in his attack hit pieces on people like Sophie and Kara. I imagine he thinks this conspiracy exists because of all the other people on the online left who dislike him for fairly credible reasons. All the things I've mentioned in this video, plus a lot of other stuff that I simply can't mention because otherwise this video would be hours long. There are so many other people that I've not mentioned that Xander Hall has hurt with his ridiculous character assassinations and the harassment of his fans. I think we've covered a lot of facts in this video that point to our man Zan not having really recovered from his alt-right days. His misogyny He's is still, still there and he needs to do a lot of work to unlearn his harmful behaviors, plus his aggression towards trans people who disagree with him and his debate bro pals while simultaneously sticking up for those who do what he says is clearly an example of his queer phobia not being properly dealt Jesus! With his lack of good grace and faith in attacking Kira shows that he actually doesn't believe his own mantra that you can debate Nazis in the marketplace of ideas and convert them, because apparently someone having said bad stuff in the past is absolutely inexcusable if it's a woman that he doesn't like. When Zan attacks people he doesn't like, there's a whole lot of projection going on. He calls Kira a terrible person who doesn't deserve redemption from her days as an alt-writer. He says that Sophie might have some good political opinions, but she's a terrible person. He calls Lani a master manipulator and implies that she was a terrible partner. He says that woke scolds are mentally ill people who need validation from the internet because they never go outside. These are all things that could be applied to Xander Hall himself. All this, coupled with a refusal to self-reflect, simply means that he's a narrow-minded man who's stuck in his own bizarre world of failed Minecraft YouTuber dreams and mummy issues. And it's sad. Lots of people like Xander Hall because, like his debate bro friends, they offer a window into politics where you don't actually have to do anything. Except for what the system says you can already do, and this makes them feel like they're making a difference in a world that they correctly know is bad. He reinforces the belief that you can change the system from within the system. And people love that. Because people with privilege and comfort don't want to do anything other than what they already do. They don't want to change the mind too much. They enjoy the cruelty and puritanical cult-like behavior that's encouraged in white Western colonial society. Just as a heads up, he has this analysis completely backwards. The reason why people don't like it when you say you can work within the system is because that means that you have the capability to make change, which means that if change isn't happening, you have the responsibility or some shared responsibility for why the world is the way that it is. Nobody likes that. Whether you're talking about um, far right people that blame you know, the Jews or whatever, or you're talking about far left people that blame capitalism, there's a very nice and comforting feeling in knowing that the world is eternally fucked and it's because of powers that are way larger and way less dealable than anything else that you could ever imagine in life. There's always gonna be a big guy pulling the, uh, you know, pulling the strings behind the curtain. You can never do anything about it. It's always too much. Um, I think that's one of the reasons why those theories are so attractive, because there's so much you can externalize in terms of blame about the world. The idea that like, oh, well, people say to work within the system because they're privileged, bullshit. People that want to work outside of the system are the privileged ones. You're never going to go into some poor black neighborhood and hear them talking about fucking mutual aid or fucking trans GoFundMes on fucking Twitter. This is some shit that is exclusive to wealthy white people on the internet and, and will almost always be the case. Because these like alternative like fucking anarcho whatever projects never do anything Anything more than satiate the desires of like well-intended but ultimately uneducated white people on the internet that want to feel like they're saving the world, especially minorities. But 
He reinforces their prejudice and basically makes them feel like they're doing an activism, whereas really they just have posting disease, thinking that you can change the world with minimal online activity. It's arguable that Xanderhal does nothing for progress despite his progressive opinions about race, gender, and sexuality. The dogpiling he encourages on marginalized people pretty much cancels out the perceived good work that he does. But there's a reason for all this being the focus of the content. We already know he was struggling for money living out with Lani, and of course he knows that having centrist drama-based content is a lot more lucrative because, well, simply put, people are ghouls and they love that shit. The debate scene is something that reinforces this observation because people like Destiny and Vosh rake in sizable incomes That's me. paper-thin positions and wildly fluctuating moral compasses, which reinforce the biases of their mostly centrist neoliberal viewers. And people love the drama the blood sport of the debate community. And ultimately, it doesn't get us anywhere. As mentioned earlier, there is no actual evidence that says that debate stops people from having bigoted opinions, nor does it stop them from hiding them. No, lots of people let those opinions out when somebody upsets them, as we've seen with our Zanny man. My friends Sophie and Kira have spoke to me in private about the harassment that they've gotten from Xander Hall's community, and it is fucking heartbreaking. These are not people that need any more shit in their lives, Xander Hall. These are phenomenal people and allies who would have supported you and fought for you if you'd only just done a little bit of work to unlearn those harmful behaviors. Take some criticism on the chin and apologize. It's that shitty debate bro mentality you've got of never conceding and never showing weakness. It doesn't help anybody including you. I actually started making content criticizing the debate circuit because of the tweet that Sophie made that you unceremoniously blasted and sent your community after her for. I already knew that debate bros were a farce in terms of their progression for the left, but that harassment and hate that you sent my friend's way radicalized me against the debate bro circuit in its entirety. I don't want to be doing hour plus long videos about nerds who just need to fucking log off for a month and read some theory. I want to be doing content about how we can literally change the world and all the awesome activism that people are doing right now. I want to restore people's faith in humanity, but you and your mates are clogging up the online political space and hurting people, and it's gotta fucking stop. You even said yourself how disappointed you are that the majority of people end up disliking you before you've even got a chance to get to know them. Ugh, who am I kidding? He's not even fucking watching the video, is he? He won't even watch this shit the entire way through. All in all, when Xanderhal talks about why he started streaming, his political journey, and what happened to him during that journey, plus his hopes and dreams, I find myself relating to him a lot. Like... We started streaming for the same reasons. He wanted to be a gaming streamer, so did I. He got into politics because he realized there was something up with the world, so did I. He enjoys what he does in the politics scene, so do I. So how did Zan get so close but so far from being super based? I'm literally 10 years older than Xanderhal, but I've got a lot of faith in Zoomers. They seem to be really well politically aligned, far more so than millennials. But with Xander Hall, I just feel this huge disappointment. This video isn't an attempt at cancellation because hell, as we all know, that doesn't work. This is just to point out to everyone, including Xander Hall, that the debate bro circuit and debate culture as a whole has got some extremely harmful behaviors that need to stop. If you've been on the fence about Xander Hall, or even if you've been watching this whole thing, foaming at the mouth, raging that I dare criticize him, all I want is for you to consider what I've said. It doesn't matter in the long run if you change your minds because I know that people are eventually going to move away from debate bro content. The world is changing in vast phenomenal ways and we're on the precipice of something amazing. And most people will forget all this drama content. They'll forget all the debate bros, all the drama channels and communities will thrive and support each other under the worsening material conditions of global capitalism. Uh -huh. There's so much more that you can use your online influence for. People are doing amazing things all across the world, and you could be covering that and giving hope to people. All I've seen in Xander Hall's comments over the last month of researching for this video is people complaining that the left is fracturing and nothing will get done while the left is always fighting like this. And well, that's just not true. Despite all this terminally online bullshit, people are making headway. People are waking up to the fact that their governments don't care about them. Wow. People are taking matters into their own hands and looking after each other. Xander Hall's audience and the entire debate bro audience are caught in a spiral of doomerism, but it could all change overnight. Just think about it. Seriously. Okay. Will do. Jesus.